Talmud, Mos Chagadai C-H-A-P-T-E-R I Mishnah all are bound to appear at the temple except a deaf man, Harish, an imbecile, and a minor, a person of unknown sex, Tum Tum of Hermaphrodite, women, unfreed slaves, the lame, the blind, the sick, the aged, and one who is unable to go up on foot, who is in this respect, deemed a minor, whoever is unable to ride on his father's shoulders and go up from Jerusalem to the temple mount, this is the view of Beth Shammai, but Beth Hillel say whoever is unable to hold his father's hand and go up from Jerusalem to the temple mount, for it is said three regalim, Beth Shammai say the pilgrimage offering must be worth at least two pieces of silver and the festal offering one mile of silver, but Beth Hillel say the pilgrimage offering must be worth at least one mile of silver and the festal sacrifice two pieces of silver tomorrow, what does the word all come to include? It comes to include one who is half a slave and half a freedman, but according to Rubina. Who says one who is half a slave and half a freedman is exempt from appearing at the temple? What does the word all come to include? It comes to include one who was lame on the first day of the festival and became well on the second. This will be right according to the one who says all of them can make good the sacrifices for one another, but according to the one who says all of them can make good the sacrifices of the first day only. What does all come to include? It comes to include a man who is blind in one eye, and it is contrary to the opinion of the following tenet. For it is taught Yohanan be Dagavai said in the name of our Judah, a man who is blind in one eye is exempt from appearing at the temple, as it is said, your eye he will see, your eye he will be seen as he comes to see, so he comes to be seen just as he comes to see with both eyes, so also to be seen with both eyes. Alternatively, I could answer actually it is as I said at first, and as for your objection arising. From the statement of Rabbanah, it is not a valid objection. The one teaching is according to the earlier mission, and the other is according to the later mission. For we have learned one who is half a slave and half a freedman serves his master one day and himself the other day. This is a view of Beth Hillel said Beth Shammai to them Talmud, Mos Chagagabi, you have made it right for his master, but you have not made it right for himself. He may not marry a bond woman, nor may he marry a free woman. Should he abstain from marriage, but then was not the world created only for propagation, as it is said, he created it not a waste, he formed it to be inhabited for the sake of the social order. Therefore, his master must be compelled to set him free, and the latter must give him a bond for the half of his value. Thereupon, Beth Hillel retracted and gave the ruling in accordance with the view of Beth Shammai, except a deaf man, Harish, an imbecile, and a minor, etc. Our mission speaks of Harish. Similarly as of the imbecile and minor just as the imbecile and minor lack understanding so Harish means one that lacks understanding this teaches us in accordance with that which we have learned wherever the sages speak of Harish it means one who can neither hear nor speak this would imply that he who can speak but not hear hear but not speak is obligated we have thus learned that which our rabbis taught one who can speak but not hear is termed Harish one who can hear but not speak is termed Ilam dumb both of these are deemed sensible in all that relates to them and whence is it deduced that one who can speak but not hear is termed Harish and one who can hear but not speak is termed Ilam for it is written but I am as Harish a deaf man I hear not and I am as Ilam a dumb man that openeth not his mouth alternatively I could explain as people say his words have been taken away one that can speak but not hear hear but not speak is obligated but surely it is taught one that can speak but not hear here but not speak is exempt said Rabbanah and according to others Rabbah our mission is defective and should read thus all are bound to appear at the temple and to rejoice except a Harish that can speak but not hear or hear but not speak who is exempt from appearing at the temple but though he is exempt from appearing he is bound to rejoice one however that can neither hear nor speak an imbecile and a minor are exempt even from rejoicing since they are exempt from all the precepts stated in the Torah likewise it is also taught all are bound to appear at the temple and to rejoice except a Harish that can speak but not hear or hear but not speak who is exempt from appearing but though he is exempt from appearing Talmud Mos Chagagai he is bound to rejoice one however that can neither hear nor speak an imbecile and a minor are exempt even from rejoicing since they are exempt from all the precepts stated in the Torah why is it that in regard to Appearing they are exempt and in regard to rejoicing they are obligated with regard to appearing it is deduced by forming an analogy between the expressions for appearing from the section assemble for it is written assemble the people the men and the women and the little ones and it is further written when all Israel is come to appear but whence is it deduced for the latter for it is written that they may hear and that they may learn and it is taught that they may hear this excludes one that can speak but not hear and that they may learn this excludes one that can hear but not speak does this then mean to say that one that cannot talk cannot learn but behold there were two dumb men in the neighborhood of rabbi sons of the daughter of our Yohanan be Gajada, and according to other sons of the sister of our Yohanan who whenever rabbi entered the college went in and sat down before him and nodded their heads and moved their lips and rabbi prayed for them and they were cured and it was found that they were versed in Halachah Sifra Sifra and the whole Talmud said Marzitra read that they may teach or as she said assuredly it is to be read that they may teach for if you suppose that it should be read that they may learn and argue that if one cannot talk one cannot learn and obviously if one cannot hear one cannot learn that follows from the expression that they may hear therefore it must certainly be read that they may teach our Tanhum said one that is deaf in one. Here is exempt from appearing at the temple for it is said in their ears but this expression in their ears is required to teach that it must be in the ears of all Israel that can be deduced from the expression before all Israel but if it were deduced from the expression before all Israel I might say even though they did not hear therefore it is written in the divine law in their ears they must be able to hear that call be deduced from the expression in order that they may hear our Tantum said one that is lame in one foot is exempt from appearing at the temple as it is said regalim on foot but this word regalim is required to exclude people with wooden legs that follows from the word peamim steps for it is taught peamim peamim means only feet and thus it is said the foot shall tread it down even the feet of the poor and the steps of pain the needy and it further says how beautiful are thy steps peamim in sandals o prince's daughter Rabbah expounded what is the meaning of the verse how beautiful are thy steps in sandals o prince's daughter it means how comely are the feet of Israel when they go up on the festival pilgrimage prince's daughter means daughter of Abraham our father who is called prince as it is said the princes of the peoples are gathered together the people of the god of Abraham the god of Abraham and not the god of Isaac and Jacob it must mean therefore the god of Abraham who was the first of the proselytes are Kahana. Said our Nathan B. Minyamai expounded in the name of our Tanham what is the meaning of the verse and the pit was empty there was no water in it since it says that the pit was empty would I not know that there was no water in it it must mean therefore there was no water in it but there were in it snakes and scorpions our rabbis taught once our Yohanan B. Baraka and our Eliezer Hizma went to pay their respects to our Joshua Piki and said he to them what new teaching was there at the college today they replied we are thy disciples and thy waters do we drink said he to them even so it is impossible for a college session to pass without some novel teaching whose Sabbath was it it was the Sabbath of our Eliezer B. Ezra they replied and what was the theme of his Haggai D.I.C. discourse today they answered the section assemble and what exposition did he give thereon assemble the people the men and the women and the little ones if the men came to learn the women came to hear but wherefore have they Little ones to come in order to grant reward to those that bring them said he to them there was a fair jewel in your hand and you sought to deprive me of it he further expounded thou hast avouched the Lord this day and the Lord has avouched thee this day the Holy One blessed be he said to Israel you have made me a unique object of your love in the world and I shall make you a unique object of my love in the world you have made me a unique object of your love as it is written here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one and I shall make you a unique object of my love as it is said Talmud Mos Chagagabi and who is like unto that people Israel a nation one in the earth and he also took up the text and expounded the words of the wise are as goats and as nails well planted are the words of masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd why are the words of the Torah likened to a goat to teach you that just as a goat directs the heifer along its furrow in order to bring Fourth life to the world so the words of the Torah direct those who study them from the paths of death to the paths of life but should you think that just as the goat is movable so the words of the Torah are movable therefore the text says nails but should you think that just as the nail diminishes and does not
Lord is with them that fear him and his covenant to make them know it. He then said to him, Go say to them, Be not concerned about your voting. Thus have I received the tradition from Rabban Yohanan Bezakai, who heard it from his teacher and his teacher from his teacher, that it is a halacha of Moses from Sinai, that in Ammon and Moab the tithe of the poor is to be given in the seventh year. What is the reason many cities were conquered by those who came up from Egypt, which were not conquered by? Those who came up from Babylon since the first consecration held only for the time but did not hold for the future permanently, therefore they were left in order that the poor might be sustained upon them in the seventh year. It is taught when his mind was calmed, he said, May it be granted that Hosea's sight be restored, and it was restored. Our rabbis taught who is deemed an imbecile, he that goes out alone at night, and he that spends the night in a cemetery, and he that tears his garments. It was taught Arhuna said they must all be done together. Our Yohanan said, Even if he does only one of them, what is the case if he does them in an insane manner? Even one is also proof if he does not do them in an insane manner, even all of them prove nothing. Actually, it is a case where he does them in an insane manner, but if he spent the night in a cemetery, I might say he did it in order that the spirit of impurity might rest upon him. If he went out alone at night, I might say he was. Ceased by lycanthropy if he tore his garment I might say he was lost in thought but as soon as he does them all Talmud, Mas Chagigadi he becomes like an ox who gored an ox and ass and a camel and becomes thereby a mu'ad forewarned Gora in regard to all animals our Papa said if Arhuna had heard of them which is taught who is deemed an imbecile one that destroys all that is given to him he would have retracted the question was raised when he would have retracted would he have retracted? Only with regard to the case of the man who tore his garment because it resembles this case or would he have retracted with regard to all of them it remains undecided the person of unknown sex tumtum or hermaphrodite etc our rabbis taught the word males by itself comes to exclude women the expression thy males comes to exclude the tumtum and hermaphrodite all thy males comes to include minors the master said the word males comes to exclude women but why do I need a verse for this? Consider it is a positive precept dependent on a fixed time and women are exempt from every positive precept dependent on a fixed time it is needed you might say we can make a deduction by forming an analogy between the expressions for appearing from the section assembled just as their women are obligated so here women are obligated it therefore teaches us that it is not so the master said the expression thy males comes to exclude a tumtum and a hermaphrodite granted that with regard to a hermaphrodite it is necessary for scripture to exclude him you might say that since he has a male aspect he is obligated it therefore teaches us that he is sui generis but the tumtum is a dubious case is a biblical text required to exclude a dubious case said abe it is required for the case where his testicles are outside the master said the expression all the males comes to include minors but we have learned except an imbecile and a minor said abe there is no contradiction to one case speaks of a minor who is old enough to be initiated, the other of a minor who is not old enough to be initiated, but a minor who is old enough to be initiated is obligated only by rabbinic enactment. Yes, it is so, and the biblical text is merely a support. What then is the purpose of the biblical text to intimate the teaching of others? For it is taught others say the scraper, the coppersmith, and the tanner are exempt from appearing at the temple, for it is said all the males he that is able to go up on the pilgrimage with all the males, these therefore are excluded because they are not fit to go up with all the males, women and unfreed slaves, etc. Granted as regards women as we have said, but as regards slaves, whence do we deduce their exemption? Said Arhuna scripture says before the Lord God this means one that has one Lord, this one therefore is excluded because he has another Lord, but why do I need a biblical intimation for this? Consider every precept which is obligatory. On a woman is obligatory on a slave every precept which is not obligatory on a woman is not obligatory on a slave for this is deduced by analogy from the case of the woman through the double occurrence of the expression unto her said Rabbanet it is needed only for the exemption of one that is half a slave and half a freedman this can also be proven for the mission speaks of women and unfreed slaves what is meant by unfreed should I say that it means entirely unfreed then it should simply say slaves surely therefore it must mean slaves that have not been completely freed and who are such those that are half slaves and half freedmen proven the lame the blind the sick the aged our rabbis taught regalim on foot this excludes people with wooden legs another interpretation regalim this excludes the lame the sick the blind the aged and one that cannot go up on foot and one that cannot go up on foot what does this come to include said Rabbi, it comes to include Talmud, Mas Chagigah. Be a delicate person for it is written when you come to appear before me who hath required this at your hand to trample my courts attended taught the uncircumcised and the unclean are exempt from bringing the pilgrimage offering granted as regards the unclean for it is written and thither thou shalt come and thither ye shall bring to whomever coming applies bringing applies to whomever coming does not apply bringing does not apply but whence do we derive the exemption of the uncircumcised. This will be according to our Akiva who includes the uncircumcised like the unclean for it is taught our Akiva said the expression what man so ever comes to include uncircumcised our rabbis taught an unclean person is exempt from bringing the pilgrimage offering for it is written and thither thou shalt come and thither ye shall bring to whomever coming applies bringing applies to whomever coming does not apply bringing does not apply our Yohanan be Dahabai said in the name of our Judah a person who is blind in one eye is exempt from appearing at the temple for it is said your eye he shall see your eye he shall be seen just as he comes to see so he comes to be seen as he comes to see with both eyes so also to be seen with both eyes are who now when he came to this verse your eye your eye what he said the slave whom his master longs to see should become estranged from him for it is written when you come to appear before me who hath required this at your hand to trample my courts are who now when he came to the following verse what and thou shalt sacrifice peace offerings and shall eat there the slave at whose table his master longs to eat should become estranged from him for it is written to what purpose is the abundance of your sacrifices unto me set the Lord our Eliezer when he came to the following verse what and his brethren could not answer him for they were affrighted at his presence now with the rebuke of flesh and blood be such how much more so the rebuke of the Holy One blessed. Be here, Eliezer, when he came to the following verse, what and Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up now? If Samuel the righteous was afraid of the judgment, how much more so should we be? How do we know this about Samuel? For it is written, and the woman said unto Saul, I see God like beings coming up out of the earth, coming up implies to one was Samuel, but who was the other? Samuel went and brought Moses with him, saying to him, Perhaps heaven forfend I am summoned to judgment arise with me, for there is nothing that thou hast written in the Torah which I did not fulfill. Our army, when he came to the following verse, what let him put his mouth in the dust, perhaps there may be hope. He said all this, and only perhaps our army, when he came to the following verse, what seek righteousness, seek humility, perhaps ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. He said all this, and only perhaps our see when he came to the following verse, what hate the evil and love it. Good and establish justice in the gate, perhaps the Lord the God of hosts will be gracious all this and only perhaps our Joseph when he came to the following verse what but there is that is swept away without judgment he said is there anyone who passes away before one's allotted time yes as in the story heard by our BBB who was frequently visited by the angel of death once the latter said to his messenger go bring me Miriam the women's hairdresser he went and brought him Miriam. The children's nurse said he to him I told thee Miriam the women's hairdresser he answered if so I will take her back said he to him since thou hast brought her let her be added but how were you able to get her she was holding a shovel in her hand and was heating Talmud, Mas Chagigaye and raking the oven she took it and put it on her foot and burned herself thus her luck was impaired and I brought her said our BBB to him have you permission to act thus he answered him is it not written? There is that is swept away without judgment he countered but behold it is written one generation passeth away and another generation cometh he replied I have charge of them till they have completed the generation and then I hand them over to Duma he then asked him but after all what do you do with her years he replied if there be a rabbinic scholar who overlooks his hurt I shall give them to him in her stead are Yohanan when he came to the following verse what and thou didst incite me against him to destroy him without cause a slave whose master when they incite him yields is there any help for him are Yohanan when he came to the following verse what behold he put no trust in his holy ones if he does not put his trust in his holy ones in
Whoever rests the judgment of the proselyte is as if he rests the judgment of the All High, for it is said, and that turn aside the proselyte from his right, the consonants can be read, and that turn me aside, our Hanan of Bipapa said, Whoever does something wrong and repents of it is forgiven at once, for it is said, and that fear not me, but if they do fear me, they are forgiven at once, are you Hanan when he came to the following verse, what for God shall bring every work into the judgment concerning. Every hidden thing a slave to whom his master accounts errors as willful offenses is there any remedy for him what is the meaning of concerning every hidden thing Rab said this refers to one who kills a louse in the presence of his neighbor so that he feels disgust thereat and Samuel said this refers to one who spits in the presence of his neighbor so that he feels disgust thereat what is the meaning of whether it be good or whether it be evil the school of Arjane said this refers to one who gives alms to a poor person publicly like the story of Arjane he once saw a man give a zeus to a poor person publicly so he said to him it had been better that you had not given him and now that you have given him publicly and put him to shame the school of Arshila said this refers to one who gives alms to a woman secretly for he brings her into suspicion Rabba said this refers to one who is in the habit of sending his wife on the eve of the Sabbath meat that has not been cut up but Rabba. Himself used to send the daughter of Arhis. is different, for he was sure of her that she was an expert. Aryohan, and when he came to the following verse, wept, and it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are come upon them. A slave whose master brings many evils and troubles upon him. Is there any remedy for him? What is the meaning of evils and troubles? Rab said, evils which become antagonists to each other, as for instance the bites of a wasp and a scorpion. And Samuel said this refers to one who furnishes money to the poor person only in the hour of his extreme distress. Rabba said, this is the meaning of the proper poor purchasing provision. Azuz is not to be found for hanging up in the basket. It can be found, and my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them. Or Barnella B. Tabumi said that Rab said to whomever hiding of the face does not apply is not one of them to whomever the words and they shall be. Devoured does not apply Talmud, Mas Chagigabi is not one of them said the rabbis to Rabba to our master the hiding of the face does not apply and the words and they shall be devoured do not apply said he to them do you know then how much I sent secretly to the court of kingship or even so the rabbis directed their eyes upon him meanwhile the court of kingship sent men who plundered him he then said this is it that is taught Rabban Simeon B. Gamaliel said wherever the rabbis direct their eyes there is either death or poverty and I will hide my face in that day Rabba said although I hide my face from them I shall speak to them in a dream our Joseph said his hand is stretched over us as it is said and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand our Joshua B. Hananiah was once at the court of Caesar a certain unbeliever showed him by gestures of people whose lord has turned his face from them he showed him in reply his hand is stretched over us said Caesar to our Joshua what? Did he show the a people whose lord has turned his face from them and I showed him his hand is stretched over us they then said to the heretic what didst thou show him a people whose lord has turned his face from them and what did he show thee I do not know said they a man who does not understand what he is being shown by gesture should hold converse in signs before the king they led him forth and slew him when the soul of our Joshua Bihanania was about to go to its rest the rabbi said to him what will become of us at the hands of the unbelievers he answered them counsel is perished from the children their wisdom is vanished so soon as counsel is perished from the children the wisdom of the peoples of the world is vanished or I may derive it from here and he said let us take our journey and let us go and I will go over against the Arila was once walking up the stairs of the house of Rabbi Bishila when he heard a child reading the verse for lo he that formeth the mountains and Create the wind and declareth unto man what his conversation was. He said, A slave master declares to him his conversation. Is there any remedy for him? What is the meaning of the expression? What his conversation was? Rab said, Even the superfluous conversation between a man and his wife is declared to a person in the hour of his death. But is it so now? Behold, Arkahada once lay down beneath the bed of Rab and he heard him converse and jest and perform his needs. Thereupon he said, The mouth of Rab is like that of one who has not tasted any food. Said Rab to him, Kahada, get out. This is unseemly. There is no contradiction. In the one case it is where he has to procure her favor, in the other where he has no need to procure her favor. But if he will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret for the pride. Our Samuel B. And said, In the name of Rab, the Holy One, blessed be he has a place and its name is secret. What is the meaning of the expression for the pride? Our Samuel B. Isaac said for the Glory that has been taken from them and given to the nations of the world, our Samuel B. Namani said for the glory of the kingdom of heaven, but is there any weeping in the presence of the Holy One? Blessed be he, for behold, our Papa said there is no grief in the presence of the Holy One. Blessed be he, for it is said, honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are at his sanctuary. There is no contradiction. The one case refers to the inner chambers, the other case refers to the outer chambers. But behold, it is written, and in that day did the Lord the God of hosts call to weeping and to lamentation and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. The destruction of the temple is different, for even the angels of peace wept over it, for it is said, Behold, for their altar they cried without the angels of peace wept bitterly, and mine I shall drop tears and tears and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. Our Eliezer said, Wherefore these three? Expressions of tears one for the first temple and one for the second temple and one for Israel who have become exiled from their place but there are some who say one for the neglect of the study of the Torah this is all right according to the view that one is for Israel who have become exiled from their place this agrees with that which is written because the Lord's flock is carried away captive but according to the view that it was for the neglect of the study of the Torah how do you explain the text because the Lord's flock is carried away since Israel have become exiled from their place you can have no greater neglect of the study of the Torah than this our rabbis taught over three the Holy One blessed be he weeps every day over him who is able to occupy himself with the study of the Torah and does not and over him who is unable to occupy himself with the study of the Torah and does and over a leader who dominates over the community rabbi was once holding the Book of Lamentations and reading therein when he came to the verse he hath cast down from heaven unto the earth it fell from his hands he said from a roof so high to a pit as deep rabbi and our high were once going on a journey when they came to a certain town they said if there is a rabbinical scholar here we shall go and pay him our respect they were told there is a rabbinical scholar here and he is blind said our high to rabbi stay here thou must not lower thy princely dignity I shall go and visit him but rabbi took hold of him and went with him when they were taking leave from him he said to them ye have visited one who is seen but does not see may ye be granted to visit him who sees but is not seen said rabbi to our high if now I had here can to you you would have deprived me of this blessing they then said to him from whom didst thou hear this I heard it at a discourse of our Jacobs for our Jacob far he used to visit his teacher every day when he became old Letter said to him, Let the master not trouble himself, since he is unable. He replied, Is it a small thing that is written concerning the rabbis, and he shall still live always? He shall not see the pit when he sees that wise man die now. If he who sees wise men at their death shall live, how much more so he who sees them in their life? Our the father of our Jacob, Bed, used to spend three months on his journey, and one day at the school, and the rabbis called him one day scholar, so he became dispirited and applied to himself. The verse I am as one that is a laughing stock to his neighbor, etc. said to him, Are you Hanan? I beg of you, do not bring down punishment upon the rabbis. Are you Hanan? And went forth to the college and delivered the following exposition. Yet they seek me day by day and delight to know my ways. Do they then seek him by day and do not seek him by night? It comes to tell you, therefore, that whoever studies the Torah even one day in the year, scripture accounts it to him as. Though he had studied the whole year through and similarly in the case of punishment for it is written after the number of the days in which you spied out the land did they then sin forty years was it not forty days that they sinned it must come to teach you therefore that whoever commits transgression even one day in the year scripture accounts it to him as though he had transgressed the whole year through who is in this respect deemed a minor whoever is unable to write on his father's shoulders etc. Our Zerah demurred thereto Talmud, Mas Chagigah who brought him thus far said Abbe to him thus far his mother brought him since she is bound to rejoice on the festival from here onward if he is able to go up from Jerusalem
Torah we also initiate a minor according to rabbinic law wherever a major is exempt according to the law of the Torah a minor is also exempt according to rabbinic law Bet Shammai say the pilgrimage offering must be worth at least two pieces of silver etc. Our rabbis taught Bet Shammai say the pilgrimage offering must be worth at least two pieces of silver and the festal offering one mile of silver because the pilgrimage offering is offered up entirely to God which is not the case with regard to the festal offering furthermore we find that for the festival of weeks scripture has enjoined more burnt offerings than peace offerings but Beth Hillel say the pilgrimage offerings must be at least one mile of silver and the festal offering two pieces of silver because the festal offering obtained prior to the revelation which is not the case with regard to the pilgrimage offering furthermore we find that in the case of the prince's scripture enjoined more peace offerings than burnt Offerings now why do not Beth Hillel agree with Beth Shammai as for your saying that the pilgrimage offering is more important because it is entirely offered up to God on the contrary the festal offering is more important because in it there are two meals and as for your saying that we should learn by analogy from the feast of weeks I contend that we should form an analogy between the offering of an individual and the offering of an individual but we should not form an analogy between the offering of an individual and an offering of the community and why do not Beth Shammai agree with Beth Hillel as for your saying that the festal offering is more important because it obtained prior to the revelation I contend that the pilgrimage offering also obtained prior to the revelation and as for your saying that we should learn by analogy from the princes I contend that we have to form an analogy between something that applies to future generations and something else that Applies to future generations, but we should not form an analogy between something that applies to future generations and something that does not apply to future generations. Now, according to Beth Hillel, why is the festal offering singled out as obtaining prior to the revelation because it is written and they sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings? Surely the pilgrimage offerings must also have been offered up, and for behold, it is written and they offered burnt offerings. Beth Hillel are of the opinion that the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a continual burnt offering, and Beth Shammai they are of the opinion that the burnt offering that the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a pilgrimage offering. Abay said Beth Shammai and our Eliezer and our Ishmael are all of the opinion that the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a pilgrimage offering, and Beth Hillel and our Akiba and our Jose the Galilean are all of it. Opinion that the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a continual burnt offering. Beth Shammai, as we have said above, our Ishmael, for it is taught our Ishmael said the general directions were given at Sinai Talmud, Mos Chagagabi, and the details in the tent of meeting. But our Akiva said the general directions and the details were given at Sinai and repeated in the tent of meeting and enjoined a third time in the plains of Moab. Now, if you suppose that the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a statutory continual burnt offering, is it possible for a sacrifice not to require flaying and dissection at first and later to require flaying and dissection? Our Eliezer, for it was taught it is a continual burnt offering which was offered in Mount Sinai. Our Eliezer said the manner of its offering was enjoined at Sinai, but it was not actually offered up. Our Akiva said it was offered up and was never discontinued. But how am I to explain it? Verse did you bring unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years O house of Israel the tribe of Levi who were not guilty of idol worship offered them up Beth Hillel as we have said above our Akiva also as we have said above our Hosea the Galilean for it is taught our Hosea the Galilean said three precepts are enjoined upon Israel when they make their pilgrimage at a festival the pilgrimage offering and the festal offering and the rejoicing the pilgrimage offering has something that the other two have not and the festal offering has something that the other two have not and the rejoicing has something that the other two have not the pilgrimage offering has something that the other two have not for the pilgrimage offering is offered entirely to God which is not the case with the other two the festal offering has something that the other two have not for the festal offering obtained prior to the revelation which was not the case with the other two the rejoicing has Something which the other two have not for the rejoicing applies to both men and women, which is not the case with the other two with reference to our Ishmael. Why do you represent him as agreeing with Beth Shammai? Because you argue if it were supposed that the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a continual burnt offering, is it possible for a sacrifice not to require flaying and dissection at first and later to require flaying and dissection? But behold, our Jose the Galilean said distinctly that the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness was a continual burnt offering, and yet he held that at first it did not require flaying and dissection, and later it did require flaying and dissection, for it is taught our Jose the Galilean said the burnt offering which the Israelites offered in the wilderness did not require flaying and dissection, because flaying and dissection came into force only from the erection of the tent of meeting. Onward strike out our Ishmael from here are his to ask how is this verse to be understood and he sent the young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings namely lambs and sacrifice peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord or perhaps both were oxen what difference does it make Marzitra said in regard to the punctuation our Abba the son of Rabbah said in regard to one who says I vow to offer a burnt offering like the burnt offering which Israel offered in the wilderness what must he offer were the oxen or lambs it remains undecided we have learned elsewhere the following things Talmud, Mos Chagagai have no prescribed limit the crop of the corner of a field to be left for the poor the first fruits of visiting of the temple real deeds of loving kindness and the study of the Torah our Yohanan said we were of the opinion that the visiting of the temple with an offering had no maximum limit but that it had a minimum limit till our Ashabir came and taught that the visiting of the temple with an offering has no maximum nor minimum limit but the sages said the pilgrimage offering must be worth at least one mile of silver and the festal offering two pieces of silver what is meant by Riyayon or Yohanan says it means appearing in the temple court Reshlakish says it means appearing with a sacrifice concerning the first day of the festival all are agreed that the visit must be accompanied by an offering they differ only with regard to the other days of the festival further if a man brings an offering every time that he comes all are agreed that we are to accept it from him they differ only with regard to a man who comes and does not bring an offering or Yohanan is of the opinion that Riyayon means appearing at the temple court he need not therefore bring an offering whenever he comes Reshlakish says Riyayon means appearing with an offering thus he must bring an offering whenever he comes Reshlakish put in. Objection to our Yohanan it is written none shall appear before me empty he replied to him this refers to the first day of the festival he again put an objection to him none shall appear before me empty this means one must bring animal sacrifices you say animal sacrifices but perhaps it means birds or meal offerings nay you may deduce it by analogy a festal offering is prescribed for man and a pilgrimage offering is prescribed for God just as the festal offering prescribed for man is an animal sacrifice so the pilgrimage offering prescribed for God is an animal sacrifice and what is meant by animal sacrifices burnt offerings you say burnt offerings but perhaps it means peace offerings nay you may deduce it by analogy a festal offering is prescribed for man and a pilgrimage offering is prescribed for God just as the festal offering which is prescribed for man is one that is fitting for him so the pilgrimage offering which is prescribed for God must be one that is fitting for him and so it is right that your table should not be full and the table of the master empty he replied this refers to the first day of the festival again he put an objection to him our Jose son of Arjuna said three times in the year were the Israelites commanded to go on pilgrimage on the feast of unleavened bread on the feast of weeks and on the feast of booths and they must not appear in divisions for it is said all the males and they must not appear empty handed for it is said none shall appear before me empty he replied this refers to the first day of the festival our Yohanan put an objection to Reshlakish it is written your eh he will see your eh he will be seen just as I come free so you come free all therefore must agree that if a person comes and does not bring an offering that he may enter the temple court and present himself and go out they differ only with regard to a person who comes and brings an offering our Yohanan who says Riyayon means Appearing in the temple court holds that there is no limit to appearing but that there is a limit to the offerings and Reshlakish says Riyayon means appearing with an offering thus there is no limit to the offerings either our Yohanan put an objection to him it is written let thy foot be seldom in thy friend's house there it
And which of them would you make zealous? What then is the purpose of the verse to intimate the teaching of others? For it is taught others say the scraper, the coppersmith, and the tanner are exempt from appearing at the temple. For it is said all the males he who is able to go on the pilgrimage with all the males these then are excluded because they are unable to go up with all the males. Mission burnt offerings during the mid festival are to be brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money and peace offerings also from animals bought with second tithe money on the first festival day of Passover. Beth Shammai say they must be brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money and Beth Hillel say they can be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. Israelites may fulfill their obligation with God offerings, free will offerings, and tithe of cattle and the priests with sin offerings and trespass offerings, firstlings the breast and the shoulder, but not. With burnt offerings, nor meal offerings, Gemara. Accordingly, it is during the mid festival only that burnt offerings are brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money, but on the festival they may be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. But why it is obligatory, and everything that is obligatory must be brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money. And if you say it comes to teach us this to with that burnt offerings can be brought during the mid festival, but not on the festival, then this will be according to Beth Shammai, for we have learned Beth Shammai say one may bring peace offerings on the festival without laying the hands upon them, but not burnt offerings. But Beth Hillel say one may bring peace offerings and burnt offerings on the festival and lay the hands upon them. Our mission is defective, and it should read thus: burnt offerings, God offerings, and free will offerings are brought during the mid festival, but they may not be brought on. The festival, but the pilgrimage burnt offering is brought even on the festival, and when it is brought, it must be brought only from animals bought with unconsecrated money. But the peace offerings of rejoicing can be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. And regarding the festival offering of the first festival day of Passover, Beth Shammai say it must be brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money, and Beth Hillel say it can be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. It has also been taught thus: burnt offerings, God offerings, and free will offerings are brought during the mid festival, but not on the festival. But the pilgrimage burnt offering is brought even on the festival, and when it is brought, it is brought only from animals bought with unconsecrated money. But the peace offerings of rejoicing can be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. And regarding the festival offering of the first festival day of Passover. Beth Shammai say it must be brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money, but Beth Hillel say it can be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. Why is the festival offering of the first festival day of Passover different? It comes to teach us this only the festival offering of the 15th of Nisan must be brought from animals bought with unconsecrated money, but not the festival offering of the 14th of Nisan Talmud. Mos Chagagai thus he holds that the festival offering of the 14th of Nisan is not enjoined by the Torah. The master said above Beth Hillel say the festival offering of the first day of the festival can be brought also from animals bought with second tithe money. Why it is obligatory and everything that is obligatory must be brought only from animals bought with unconsecrated money. Ola said when he supplements the unconsecrated by that of the second tithe, Hezekiah said one animal may be supplemented by another animal. But money may not be supplemented by money, and Aryohan and said money may be supplemented by money, but one animal may not be supplemented by another animal. There is a teaching agreeing with Hezekiah, and there is a teaching agreeing with Aryohan, and there is a teaching agreeing with Aryohan, and it is written after the tribute. This teaches that a man must bring his obligatory offering from animals bought with unconsecrated money, and whence do we know that if he desires to mix, he may mix the text. Teaches according as the Lord thy God shall bless thee. There is a teaching agreeing with Hezekiah. The expression after the tribute teaches that a man may bring his obligatory offering from animals bought with unconsecrated money. Beth Shammai say the first festival day from animals bought with unconsecrated money, thenceforward also from animals bought with second tithe money. Beth Hillel say the first meal from animals bought with unconsecrated money, thenceforward from animals. Bought with second tithe money and the remaining days of Passover a man may fulfill his obligation also with the tithe of cattle why may he not do so on the festival or as she said lest he come to separate tithe on the festival and it is impossible to separate tithe on the festival on account of the marking with red paint what evidence is there that the word tribute indicates that which is unconsecrated because it is written and the king Ahasuerus swears laid tribute upon the land Israelites may fulfill their obligation with God offerings and free will offerings our rabbis taught it is written and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast this includes all kinds of rejoicings as festival rejoicing hence the sages said Israelites may fulfill their obligation with God offerings free will offerings and tithe of cattle and the priests with sin offering and guilt offering and with firstlings and with the breast and the shoulder one might think also with bird offerings and meal offerings Therefore scripture teaches and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast Talmud, Mos Chagagabi only with those offerings from which the festal offering can be brought these then are excluded since the festal offering cannot be brought from them or as she said it is to be deduced from the expression and thou shalt rejoice these then are excluded because there is no festive joy in them but what does our Ashi do with the expression in thy feast to intimate what our Daniel Bikatna learned for our Daniel? Bikatna said that Rab said whence is it derived that marriages may not take place during the mid-festival because it is said and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast but not in thy wife Mishnah he that has many to eat with him and few possessions offers many peace offerings and few burnt offerings he that has many possessions and few to eat with him brings many burnt offerings and few peace offerings he that has few of either for him is prescribed one mile of silver two pieces of silver. He that has many of both of him, it is said, every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he hath given thee. Gemara, whence shall he bring many peace offerings? Behold, he has not said, Arhista, he may supplement unconsecrated money with second tithe money and bring a large bull set. Arshis hate to him. Behold, they said, one may supplement peace with peace. What did he mean? Should one say he meant this? Behold, they said, one may supplement peace with peace, but not money with money. Then he should say to him, one may not supplement money with money. He must therefore have meant this. Behold, they said, one may also supplement peace with peace. According to whom will this be? It will be neither according to Hezekiah nor according to Aryohanan. And should you say it is only the Amram who differ about it, but the Barithas do not differ. But behold, it says, the first meal must come from unconsecrated money. The first meal means that the amount of the value of a First meal must be from unconsecrated money. Ola said that Reshlakish said if a man set aside ten beasts for his festival offering and he offered up five on the first day of the festival, he may offer up the other five on the second day of the festival. Or Yohanan said since he has interrupted the offer above and not leave Arhis Dajuan for what is prohibited from a statement of what is permitting, he cannot offer any more. Our Abba said, but they do not differ. The one speaks of an instance where he did not declare his intention, and the other speaks of an instance where he did declare his intention. What is the case of the one who had not declared his intention? Should one say that there is no time left in the day to offer them, and the reason for his not offering them was because there is no time left in the day? Should one say therefore that he had no more people to eat with him? No, it refers to a case where there was time left in the day to offer, and he had people to eat. With him seeing that he did not offer them on the first day of the festival, it proves that he left them over intentionally, and so it stands to reason for when Rabin came from Palestine, he said that our Yohanan said if a man set aside ten beasts for his festival offering and he offered five the first day of the festival, he may offer the other five on the second day of the festival. Now the two statements of our Yohanan contradict one another, surely therefore you must learn from this that in the one case he does not declare his intention, and in the other he does declare his intention proven. It is also reported our Shaman B. Abba said that our Yohanan said Talmud, Mos Chagagag, they taught this only of a case when it had not ended, but if it had ended, he may offer the rest on the second day. What does ended mean? Shall one say it means he had ended his sacrifices? What in that case should he offer? It must mean therefore that the day had not ended, but if the day had ended, he may. Offer the rest on the second day Mishnah he who did not bring his festival offering on the first festival day of the Feast of Tabernacles may bring it during the whole of the festival even on the last festival day of the Feast of Tabernacles if the festival passed and he did not bring the festival offering he is not bound to make it good of such a person
Bury the deduces it from you for it is taught and ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days one might think that he must go on bringing festal offerings the whole of the seven days scripture therefore says it not only are you to offer festal offerings but you are not to offer festal offerings on all the seven days if so why does it say seven to intimate that one may make good the festal offering during the seven days of the festival and whence do we learn that if he did not bring the festal offering on the first festival day of the feast of tabernacles that he can go on bringing it during the course of the whole festival even on the last festival day scripture says ye shall keep it in the seventh month if now it is to be kept in the seventh month one might think that one can go on bringing the festal offering throughout the whole month therefore scripture says it not only are you to offer festal offerings but you are not to offer festal offerings outside it and what is the nature of this making good are you says they make up for the first day and Arashai says they make up for one another what is the practical point at issue between them are said the case of a man who was lame on the first day of the festival and became well on the second day is the point of issue between them are you says they make up for the first day since on the first day he was not qualified to bring the festal offering he is not qualified on the second and Arashai says they make up for one another although he was not qualified on the first day he is qualified on the second but could Aryohanan have said this for behold Hezekiah said if a Nazi right became defiled during the day of the eighth he has to bring a sacrifice but during the night preceding the eighth he does not have to bring a sacrifice but Aryohanan said also if he was defiled during the night he must bring a sacrifice said our Jeremiah the case of uncleannesses. Different because it can be made good as is the case with the sacrifice on the second Passover our Papa demurred to this it is right according to the view that the second Passover Talmud, Mos Chagagabi makes up for the first but what is to be said according to the view that the second Passover is a separate festival therefore said our Papa Aryohanan must be of the opinion that the night before the day on which the sacrifice is due is not regarded as belonging to the preceding period but how could Aryohanan have said this for behold Aryohanan said if Azab had one omission in the night and two in the following day he must bring a second offering but if he had two in the night and one in the day he has not to bring a second offering now if you imagine that Aryohanan is of the opinion that the night before the day on which the sacrifice is due is not regarded as belonging to the preceding period then even if he had two omissions at night and one in the day he must bring a second offering Aryohanan said this only according to the view that the night before is regarded as belonging to the preceding period but according to this view it is surely obvious it is required for the case where there are two omissions in the day and one the preceding night you might have thought the decision to be according to the objection of our son of our idiot therefore teaches us that it is according to our Joseph if the festival passed and he did not bring the Festival offering he is not bound to make it good of such a person it is said he that is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be restored bar he he said to Hillel instead of the expression to be reckoned it ought to be to be filled it must refer therefore to one whose fellows reckoned him for the performance of a religious act but he would not be reckoned with them it has also been taught us he that is crooked cannot be made straight this refers to one who neglected to read the morning shema or the evening shema or he neglected the morning prayer or the evening prayer and that which is wanting cannot be reckoned this refers to one whose fellows resolved on the performance of a religious act and he would not be reckoned with them bar he he said to Hillel then shall ye again discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not the righteous is the same as he that serveth God the wicked is the same as he that serveth him not he answered him he that serveth him and he that serveth him not both refer to such as are perfectly righteous but he that repeated his chapter a hundred times is not to be compared with him who repeated a hundred and one times said bar he to him and because of once he is called he that serveth him not he answered yes go and learn from the mule drivers market ten par sangs for one zoos eleven par sangs for two zoos elijah said to bar he and others say to our eliezer what is the meaning of the verse behold i have refined thee but not as silver i have tried thee in the furnace of affliction it teaches that the holy one blessed be he went through all the good qualities in order to give them to israel and he found only poverty samuel said and others say our joseph this accords with the popular saying poverty befits israel like a red trapping a white horse our simeon bimanesia said who is it that is crooked who cannot be made straight he that has Connection with a forbidden relation and begets by her bastard issue etc. Only if he begets but not if he does not beget but behold it is taught our Simeon Bimanesia said if a man steal he can return the theft and so become straight but he that has connection with a married woman and makes her prohibited unto her husband is banished from the world and passes away our Simeon Bio he said one does not say examine the camel examine the pig only examine the lamb and who is this a disciple of the wise who has forsaken the Torah our Judah Belakish said any disciple of the wise who has forsaken the Torah of him scripture says as a bird that wandereth from her nest so is a man that wandereth from his place and it further says what unrighteousness have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me there is no contradiction the one case refers to his unmarried sister the other refers to a married woman or I might say both are cases of married women but there is no contradiction in it. One case Talmud, Mos Chagagai it was against her will and the other it was with her consent or you may say in both cases it was against her will but there is no contradiction the one case concerns a priest's wife and the other an Israelite's wife neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in rap said as soon as man goes forth from Halashik to scripture study he no longer has peace and Samuel said it means one who leaves Talmud for Mishnah and Aryohan and said even if he goes from Talmud to Talmud Mishnah the laws concerning the dissolution of vows hover in the air and have not to rest on the laws concerning the Sabbath festival offerings acts of trespass are as mountains hanging by a hair for they have scant scriptural basis but many laws the laws concerning civil cases and temple services Levitical cleanness and uncleanness and the forbidden relations have what to rest on and it is they that are the essentials of the Torah Gemara it is taught our Eliezer said. They have something to rest on for it is said when one shall clearly utter a vow when one shall clearly utter a vow one intimates an utterance to bind and the other an utterance to dissolve our Joshua said they have something to rest on for it is said wherefore I swore in my wrath it means I swore in my wrath but I retracted our Isaac said they have something to rest on for it is said whosoever is of a willing heart Hananiah son of the brother of our Joshua said they have something to rest on for it is said I have sworn and I have confirmed it to observe by righteous ordinances Rab Judah said that Samuel said had I been there I should have said to them my scriptural proof is better than yours for it is said he shall not break his word he may not break it but others may dissolve it for him Rabbi said to all these proofs objection can be made except to that of Samuel against which no objection can be raised for against our Eliza it may be objected perhaps the verses to be Explained according to our Judah who said it in the name of our Tarfan, for it is taught our Judah said in the name of our Tarfan, indeed neither of them becomes a Nazi right because Nazi rightship can be assumed only by clear utterance against our Joshua. It may be objected, perhaps this is the meaning of the verse I swore in my wrath and did not retract against our Isaac. It may be objected, perhaps the verse comes to exclude the view of Samuel, for Samuel said though he determined in his heart he must still utter it with his lips, and the verse teaches us that even though he did not utter it with his lips, it is binding against Hanani, the son of the brother of our Joshua. It may be objected, perhaps the verse is to be explained according to Argidal who said it in the name of Rab, for Argidal said that Rab said whence is it to be deduced that one may take an oath to fulfill a precept, for it is said I have sworn and I have confirmed it to observe by righteous ordinances, but against. Samuel's proof no objection can be raised Rabbah and some say our and B. Isaac said this is the meaning of the popular saying better one grain of pungent pepper than a basket full of pumpkins the laws concerning the Sabbath but they are written in scripture no it is necessary to state this for the teaching of our Abba for our Abba said he who digs a hole on the Sabbath and requires it only for the sake of its earth is not liable for it according to which authority will this be according to our Simeon who said one is not liable for work performed on the Sabbath which is not required for itself you may even say that it is according to our Judah there one is improving here one is spoiling but why does it say as mountains hanging by a hair Talmud Mos Chagagabi because the Torah prohibited on the Sabbath purpose work yet purpose work is not mentioned in scripture laws concerning festal offerings but they are written in scripture no it is necessary in the
Celebrate a festival before me. Do not think of this, for it is written, neither shall the fat of my feast remain all night until the morning. If now you suppose that it means a festival only has a festival fat, but perhaps the divine law means this the fat that is offered during the course of the festival should not remain overnight. If so, then it would imply that only during the festival the fat may not remain overnight, but throughout the year it may remain overnight. But behold, it is written all night unto the morning, but perhaps from this verse alone one would know it merely as a positive precept. Therefore, scripture wrote the other verse to enjoin it as a prohibition. To enjoin it as a prohibition, there is another verse, neither shall any of the flesh which thou sacrificest the first day and even remain all night until the morning, but perhaps this was required in order to impose upon him two prohibitions and one positive precept, rather it can be deduced from. The word wilderness which occurs in two passages here it is written that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness and elsewhere it is written did ye bring unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness just as in the latter verse it means sacrifices so in the former it means sacrifices why then does it say as mountains hanging by a hair because no inference may be drawn concerning statements of the Torah from statements of the prophets acts of sacrilege but they are written. In scripture Rami Bihama said it is required only for that which we have learned if the agent did his errand committing thereby an act of sacrilege the householder is guilty of sacrilege if he did not do his errand the agent is guilty of sacrilege but why should he be guilty if he did his errand shall one man sin and another become liable that is why the mission says as mountains hanging by a hair Rabbi said but what is the objection perhaps sacrilege is different since we compare it with Terima through the analogous expressions for sin which occur in connection with both laws just as there the agent of a person is like himself so here the agent of a person is like himself rather said Rabbah it must be required for the following teaching if the householder remembered but the agent did not remember the agent is guilty of sacrilege what has the poor agent done that is why the Mishnah says as mountains hanging by a hair Arashi said what is the objection perhaps it is like every other case where one spent in error sacred money for secular purposes rather said Arashi it must be required for that which we have learned if a man took away a stone or a beam from temple property he is not guilty of sacrilege but if he gave it to his fellow he himself is guilty but his fellow is not guilty see now he has taken it what difference does it make whether he or his fellow keeps it therefore it says like mountains hanging by a hair but what is the objection perhaps it is to be explained according to Samuel, for Samuel said here Talmud, Mos Chagigai, it refers to the treasurer of the sanctuary to whom the building stones had been entrusted so that wherever it is it is in his possession rather it can be explained from the latter part of the Mishnah if he built it into his house he is not guilty of sacrilege until he dwells under it to the value of a paratasi now he has effected a change therein what difference does it make whether he dwells under it or does not dwell under it therefore it says like mountains hanging by a hair but what is the objection perhaps it is to be explained according to Rav for Rav said it refers to a case where he placed it over a roof aperture in which case if he dwells in the house he is guilty of sacrilege if he does not dwell in the house he is not guilty therefore it must be after all as Rav said and as for your objection that the same applies to any person who spent in error sacred money for Secular purposes one may answer there he knew full well that he had sacred money he should therefore have taken care but here how could he know therefore the Mishnah says as mountains hanging by a hair scant scriptural basis but many laws a taught the laws concerning defilement through leprosy signs and tent covering have scant scriptural basis and many laws you say leprosy signs have scant scriptural basis on the contrary leprosy signs have considerable scriptural basis or papa said it means as follows leprosy signs have considerable scriptural basis and few laws defilement through tent covering has scant scriptural basis and many laws but what practical difference does it make if you are in doubt about anything concerning leprosy signs search the Bible but if you are in doubt about anything concerning defilement through tent covering search the Mishnah civil cases but they are written in scripture it is necessary only for the teaching of rabbi for it is Taught Rabbi said life for life means monetary compensation you say it means monetary compensation but perhaps it means actual life giving is mentioned below and giving is mentioned above just as in the latter case it means monetary compensation so in the former case it means monetary compensation temple services but they are written in scripture it refers only to the carrying of the blood to the altar for it is taught and they shall present this means the receiving of it. Blood now the divine law used for it an expression of carrying as it is written and the priest shall present the whole and make it smoke upon the altar and the master said this means the carrying of the pieces of the offering to the altar ramp this is to tell us that the carrying of the blood is not to be excluded from the category of receiving the blood laws of Levitical cleanness but they are written in scripture it refers only to the measure of a ritual bath which is not stated. In scripture for it is taught and he shall bathe in water this means in water of a ritual bath all his flesh this means in water which covers all his body and how much is this a cubit by a cubit to the height of three cubits and the sages fix the measure of the ritual bath water at 40 seahs laws concerning love Eichel, uncle and s but they are written in scripture it refers only to defilement caused by touching a part of a dead creeping creature which is the size of a lentil this is not stated in scripture for it is taught in them i might think it means all of them therefore scripture teaches of them i might then think it means even a part of them therefore scripture says in them how is this to be explained it means that he is not defiled till he touches a part of one which is as a whole of one the sages fix the measure at the size of a lentil for a snail is at first the size of a lentil our jose b our judah said it must be the size of the tail of a lizard Forbidden relations, but they are written in scripture. Talmud, Mos Chagigabi. This refers only to his daughter by a woman whom he had forced. This case is not written in scripture. For Rabbah said, Our Isaac B. of Dimi told me it is to be deduced by analogy from the words they and from the words Ludness, Ludness, it is that are the essentials of the Torah. These are and those are not say, therefore, these and those are essentials of the Torah. Chapteri, I mission the subject of. Forbidden relations may not be expounded in the presence of three, nor the work of creation in the presence of two, nor the work of the chariot in the presence of one, unless he is a sage and understands of his own knowledge. Whosoever speculates upon four things, a pity for him, he is as though he had not come into the world to win what is above, what is beneath, what before, what after, and whosoever takes no thought for the honor of his maker, it were a mercy if he had not come into the world. Gemara you say at first nor the work of the chariot in the presence of one and then you say unless he is a sage and understands of his own knowledge this is the meaning of forbidden relations may not be expounded to three nor the work of creation to two nor the work of the chariot to one unless he is a sage and understands of his own knowledge the forbidden relations may not be expounded in the presence of three what is the reason shall one say because it is written whosoever to any that is near akin to him whosoever implies to near akin to him implies one and the divine law said ye shall not approach to uncover their nakedness but then since it is written whosoever curses his god whosoever giveth of his seat unto Molech are these passages also to be interpreted thus these therefore must be required to make Gentiles subject to the prohibition concerning blasphemy and idolatry like the Israelites then this verse is also required to make Gentiles subject to the Prohibition concerning the forbidden relations like the Israelites it must be inferred therefore from the verse therefore shall ye keep my charge ye shall keep implies to my charge implies one and the divine law said that ye do not any of these abominable customs but then since it is written ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore and ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread and ye shall keep the charge of the holy things are these passages also to be interpreted thus therefore said. Arashi the forbidden relations may not be expounded in the presence of three must mean the secrets of the forbidden relations may not be expounded to three what is the reason it is a logical conclusion when two sit before their master one engages in discussion with his master and the other inclines his ear to the instruction but when there are three one engages in discussion with his master and the other two engage in discussion with one another and do not know what their master is saying and May come to permit that which is prohibited in the matter of the forbidden relations if so the rule should apply to the whole Torah also the subject of forbidden relations is different for the master said robbery and the forbidden relations a man's soul covets and lusts for them if so the rule should apply to robbery also in the case of the forbidden relations whether the opportunity be before him or not before him a man's inclination is strong in the case of robbery if the opportunity is before him
is inferred from the expression from one end of heaven unto the other. Wherefore do I need the expression since the day that God created man upon the earth to intimate that which our Eliezer taught for our Eliezer said the first man extended from the earth to the firmament as it is said since the day that God created man upon the earth. But as soon as he sinned the Holy One blessed be he placed his hand upon him and diminished him for it is said thou hast fashioned me after and before end. Lay thine hand upon me, Rab Judah said that Rab said the first man extended from one end of the world to the other, for it is said since the day that God created man upon the earth and from one end of heaven to the other, as soon as he sinned the Holy One, blessed be he placed his hand upon him and diminished him, for it is said, and lay thine hand upon me, if so the verses contradict one another, they both have the same dimensions. Rab Judah further said that Rab said ten things were created. First day and they are as follows heaven and earth, Tohu chaos, Bohu desolation, light and darkness, wind and water, the measure of day and the measure of night, heaven and earth, for it is written in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, Tohu and Bohu, for it is written, and the earth was Tohu and Bohu, light and darkness, darkness, for it is written, and darkness was upon the face of the deep light, for it is written, and God said, Let there be light, wind and water, for it is written, and the wind of God hovered over the face of the waters the measure of day and the measure of night for it is written and there was evening and there was morning one day it is Tato who is a green line that encompasses the whole world out of which darkness proceeds for it is said he made darkness his hiding place round about him Bohu this means the slimy stones that are sunk in the deep out of which the waters proceed for it is said and he shall stretch over it the line of confusion Tohu and the plummet of emptiness Bohu but was the light created on the first day for behold it is written and God set them in the firmament of the heaven and it is further written and there was evening and there was morning a fourth day this is to be explained according to our Eliezer for our Eliezer said the light which the Holy One blessed be he created on the first day one could see thereby from one end of the world to the other but as soon as the Holy One blessed be he beheld the generation of the flood and the generation of the dispersion and saw that their actions were corrupt he arose and hid it from him for it is said but from the wicked their light is withholden and for whom did he reserve it for the righteous in the time to come for it is said and God saw the light that it was good and good means only the righteous for it is said say of the righteous that he is good as soon as he saw the light that he had reserved for the righteous he rejoiced for it is said he rejoiceth at the light of the righteous now tanaim differ on the point the light which the holy one blessed be he created on the first day one could see and look thereby from one end of the world to the other this is the view of our Jacob but the sages say it is identical with the luminaries for they were created on the first day but they were not hung up in the firmament till the fourth day Arzal Rabi Tobia said that Rab said by ten things was the world created by wisdom and by understanding and by reason and by Strength and by rebuke and by might by righteousness and by judgment by loving kindness and by compassion by wisdom and understanding for it is written the Lord by wisdom founded the earth and by understanding established the heavens by reason for it is written by his reason the depths were broken up by strength and might for it is written who by his strength to take fast the mountains who is girded about with might by rebuke for it is written the pillars of heaven were trembling but they became astonished at his rebuke by righteousness and judgment for it is written righteousness and judgment are the foundation of thy throne by loving kindness and compassion for it is written remember O Lord thy compassions and thy mercies for they have been from of old Rab Judah further said at the time that the Holy One blessed be he created the world it went on expanding like two clues of warp until the Holy One blessed be he rebuked it and brought it to a standstill for it is said the pillars of Heaven were trembling, but they became astonished at his rebuke, and that too is what Rashlake said. What is the meaning of the verse? I am God Almighty, it means I am he that said to the world, enough Rashlake said when the Holy One blessed be he created the sea, it went on expanding until the Holy One blessed be he rebuked it and caused it to dry up, for it is said he rebuked the sea and make it dry and dry up all the rivers are rabbis taught Bethsham I say heaven was created first. And afterwards the earth was created, for it is said in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth Bethilel say earth was created first, and afterwards heaven, for it is said in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven Bethilel said to Bethsham I according to your view a man builds the upper story first, and afterwards builds a house, for it is said it is he that buildeth his upper chambers in the heaven and hath founded his vault upon the earth, said Bethsham I Beth. Hillel according to your view a man makes a footstool first and afterwards he makes a throne for it is said thus saith the Lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool but the sages say both were created at the same time for it is said Yaman hand hath laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand hath spread out the heavens when I call unto them they stand up together and the others what is the meaning of together it means that they cannot be loosened from one. Another however the verses contradict one another Rashlakish answered when they were created he created heaven first and afterwards he created the earth but when he stretched them forth he stretched forth the earth first and afterwards he stretched forth heaven what does heaven Shami mean our Jose Bihanna said it means there is water in the berry that it is taught it means fire and water this teaches that the holy one blessed be he brought them and mixed them one with the other end. Made from them the firmament are Ishmael questioned our Akiba when they were going on a journey together saying to him thou who hast waited twenty two years upon Nahum of Gimzo who used to explain the particle F throughout the Torah tell me what exposition did he give of F the heaven and F the earth said our Akiba to him if it had said heaven and earth I could have said that heaven and earth were names of the Holy One blessed be he but now that it says F the heaven and F the earth heaven means the actual heaven and earth means the actual earth Talmud, Mos Chagigabi but why do we have F the earth to put heaven before earth and the earth was unformed and void consider scripture began at first with heaven why then does it proceed to relate first the work of the earth the school of our Ishmael taught it is like a human king who said to his servants come early to my door he rose early and found women and men whom does he praise the ones who are not Accustomed to rise early but yet did rise early it is taught our Jose says alas for people that they see but know not what they see they stand but know not on what they stand what does the earth rest on on the pillars for it is said who shake the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble the pillars upon the waters for it is said to him that spread forth the earth above the waters the waters upon the mountains for it is said the waters stood above the mountains the mountains on it. Wind for it is said for lo he that formeth the mountains and create the wind the wind upon the storm for it is said the wind the storm make that substance storm is suspended on the arm of the holy one blessed be he for it is said and underneath are the everlasting arms but the sages say the world rests on twelve pillars for it is said he set the borders to the peoples according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel and some say seven pillars for it is said she hath hewn. Out her seven piliers are Eliezer Bisham who says it rests on one pillar and its name is righteous for it is said but righteous is the foundation of the world our Judah said there are two firmaments for it is said behold unto the Lord thy God Belengeth heaven and the heaven of heavens Rashlake said there are seven namely while in Rakia Shachim Zebul Ma'an Ma'an both while serves no purpose except that it enters in the morning and goes forth in the evening and renews every day the work of creation for it is said that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in Rakia is that in which sun and moon stars and constellations are set for it is said and God set them in the firmament Rakia of the heaven Shachim is that in which millstones stand and grind manna for the righteous for it is said and he commanded the skies Shachim above and opened the doors of heaven and he caused manna to rain upon them for food etc Zebul is that in which the Heavenly Jerusalem and the temple and the altar are built and Michael the great prince stands and offers up thereon an offering for it is said I have surely built thee a house of habitations and a place for thee to dwell in forever and whence do we derive that it is called heaven for it is written look down from heaven and see even from thy holy and glorious habitation Mayan is that in which there are companies of ministering angels who utter divine song by night and are silent by day. For the sake of Israel's glory for it is said by day the Lord doth command his loving kindness and in the night his song is with me Rush Lakish said whoever occupies himself with the study of the Torah by night the Holy One blessed be he draws over him a cord of loving kindness by day for it is said by day the Lord doth command his loving kindness because by night his song is with me and there are some who say Rush Lakish said whoever occupies himself with the study of the Torah in this world. Which is like the night the Holy
that in which there are right and judgment and righteousness, the treasures of life and the treasures of peace and the treasures of blessing, the souls of the righteous and the spirits and the souls which are yet to be born and do wear with the Holy One, blessed be he will hereafter revive the dead, right and judgment, for it is written, right and judgment are the foundations of thy throne, righteousness, for it is written, and he put on righteousness as a coat of mail, the treasures of life, for it is written, for with thee is the fountain of life and the treasures of peace, for it is written, and called it the Lord is peace and the treasures of blessing, for it is written, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord, the souls of the righteous, for it is written, yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound up in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, the spirits and the souls which are yet to be born, for it is written, for the spirit that enwrapeth itself is from me and the souls which I have made and the doer with the Holy One, blessed be he, will hereafter revive the dead, for it is written about the rain didst thou pour down, O God, when thine inheritance was weary, thou didst confirm it thereto are the Ophanim and the Seraphim and the holy living creatures and the ministering angels and the throne of God and the King the living God, high and exalted dwells over them in Erebo, for it is said, Extol him that writes upon Erebo, whose name is the Lord, and whence do we derive that it is called heaven from the word writing which occurs in two biblical passages here it is written, Extol him that writes upon Erebo, and elsewhere it is written, Who writes upon the heaven as thy help and darkness and cloud and thick darkness around him, for it is said he made darkness his hiding place, his pavilion round about him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of skies, but is there any darkness before heaven, for behold, it is written, He revealeth the deep and secret things, he knoweth what is in it. Darkness and the light dwelleth with him, there is no contradiction. The one verse Talmud, Mos Jagadah, refers to the inner chambers, the other to the outer chambers, and Arahabi Jacob said, There is still another heaven above the heads of the living creatures, for it is written, and over the heads of the living creatures there was a likeness of a firmament, like the color of the terrible eye stretched forth over their heads above. Thus far you have permission to speak, thenceforward you have not permission to speak, for so it is written in the book of Ben Seek not things that are too hard for thee, and search not things that are hidden from thee, the things that have been permitted thee, think thereupon thou hast no business with the things that are secret, it is taught, are Yohan and Bezakai said, What answer did the bath coal give to that wicked one when he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high, a bath coal went forth and said to him, O wicked man, son. Of a wicked man, grandson of Nimrod, the wicked who stirred the whole world to rebellion against me by his rule. How many are the years of man? Seventy. For it is said, the days of our years are threescore years and ten, or even by reason of strength, fourscore years. But the distance from the earth to the firmament is a journey of five hundred years, and the thickness of the firmament is a journey of five hundred years. And likewise, the distance between one firmament and the other above them are the holy living creatures. The feet of the living creatures are equal to all of them. Together, the ankles of the living creatures are equal to all of them. The legs of the living creatures are equal to all of them. The knees of the living creatures are equal to all of them. The thighs of the living creatures are equal to all of them. The bodies of the living creatures are equal to all of them. The necks of the living creatures are equal to all of them. The heads of the living creatures are equal to all. Of them the horns of the living creatures are equal to all of them above them is the throne of glory the feet of the throne of glory are equal to all of them the throne of glory is equal to all of them the king the living and eternal god high and exalted dwelleth above them yet thou didst say i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high nay thou shalt be brought down to the nether world to the uttermost parts of the pit nor the work of the chariot in the presence of one are high taught but the headings of chapters may be transmitted to him or said the headings of chapters may be transmitted only to the head of the court and to one whose heart is anxious within him others say only if his heart is anxious within him or amini said the mysteries of the torah may be transmitted only to one who possesses five attributes namely the captain of fifty and the man of rank and the counselor and the cunning charmer and the skillful enchanter are am I? Further said the teachings of the Torah are not to be transmitted to an idolater for it is said he hath not dealt so with any nation and as for his ordinances they have not known them or Yohanan said to our Eliezer come I will instruct you in the work of the chariot he replied I am not old enough when he was old enough or Yohanan died R.C. then said to him come I will instruct you in the work of the chariot he replied had I been worthy I should have been instructed by our Yohanan your master R. Joseph was studying the work of the chariot the elders of Pumadai who were studying the work of creation the latter said to the former let the master teach us the work of the chariot he replied teach me the work of creation after they had taught him they said to him let the master instruct us in the work of the chariot he replied we have learned concerning it honey and milk are under thy tongue the things that are sweeter than honey and milk should be under thy tongue are above said it is Inferred from this verse, the lambs cave basin will be for thy clothing, the things which are the mystery kibshano of the world should be under thy clothing. They then said to him, We have already studied therein as far as, and he said unto me, Son of man, he replied, This is the very portion of the work of the chariot. An objection was raised, How far does the portion of the work of the chariot extend? Rabbi said, As far as the second, and I saw, or Isaac said, As far as Hashmal, as far as I saw me. He taught thenceforward only the heads of chapters may be transmitted. Some, however, say, As far as I saw, the heads of chapters may be transmitted. Thenceforward, if he is a sage able to speculate by himself, yes, if not, no, but may one expound the mysteries of Hashmal. For behold, there was once a child who expounded the mysteries of Hashmal, and a fire went forth and consumed him. The case of the child is different, for he had not reached the fitting age. Rab Judah said that man be remembered. For blessing namely Hananiah be Hezekiah but for him the book of Ezekiel would have been withdrawn for its words contradict the words of the Torah what did he do three hundred carob of oil were brought up to him and he sat in an upper chamber and expounded it the rabbis taught there was once a child who was reading at his teacher's house the book of Ezekiel and he apprehended what Hashmal was whereupon the fire went forth from Hashmal and consumed him so they sought to suppress the book of Ezekiel. But Hananiah be Hezekiah said to them if he was a sage all our sages what does the word Hashmal mean Rab Judah said Talmud, Mos Chagagah be living creatures speaking fire in a very that it is taught Hashmal means at times they are silent at times they speak when the utterance goes forth from the mouth of the Holy One blessed be he they are silent and when the utterance goes not forth from the mouth of the Holy One blessed be he they speak and the living creatures ran and returned as it. Appearance of a flash of lightning, what is the meaning of ran and returned? Rab Judah said, like the flame that goes forth from the mouth of a furnace, what is the meaning of as the appearance of a flash of lightning? Our Jose B. Hanada said, like the flame that goes forth from between the pots, hurts, and I looked, and behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, a great cloud with a fire flashing up, so that a brightness was round about it, and out of the midst thereof is the color of electrum hashwal. Out of the midst of the fire, whither did it go? Rab Judah said that Rab said it went to subdue the whole world under the wicked Nebuchadnezzar, and wherefore all this that the peoples of the world might not say into the hand of a low people, the Holy One, blessed be he delivered his children, the Holy One, blessed be he said, who caused me to be a servant to idol worshippers, the iniquities of Israel, they caused me now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one will at the bottom hard by the living. Creatures are Eliezer said it means a certain angel who stands on the earth and his head reaches unto the living creatures in a very that it is taught his name is Sandalphone he is higher than his fellows by a distance of five hundred years journey and he stands behind the chariot and wreaths crowns for his maker but is it so behold it is written blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place accordingly no one knows his place he pronounces the divine name over the crown and it goes and rest on his head Rabbah said all that Ezekiel saw Isaiah saw what does Ezekiel resemble a villager who saw the king and what does Isaiah resemble a townsman who saw the king Rush said what is the meaning of the verse I will sing unto the Lord for he is highly exalted it means a song to him who is exalted over the exalted ones for a master said the king of the wild animals is the lion the king of the cattle is the ox the king of the birds is the eagle and man is exalted over them and it Holy One, blessed be he is exalted over all of them and over the whole world. One verse says, As for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man, and they four had the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of
Face of man one might infer likewise that the wings covering them were taken away they must therefore have been exposed and he saw them similarly here they were exposed and he saw them but how can they be compared granted that it is customary to expose one's face before one's master but it is not customary to expose one's feet before one's master one verse says thousand thousands ministered unto him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him and another verse says is there any number of his armies there is no contradiction the one refers to a time when the temple was standing and the other refers to a time when the temple was no longer standing when as it were the heavenly household was diminished it is taught rabbi said in the name of abba jose b dosai thousand thousands ministered unto him this is the number of one troop but of his troops there is no number but jeremiah b abba said thousand thousands ministered unto him at the fiery stream for it is said a fiery Stream issued and came forth from before him thousand thousands ministered unto him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him whence does it come forth from the sweat of the living creatures and whither does it pour forth our zitra Tobia said that rap set upon the head of the wicked and get him for it is said behold a storm of the Lord is gone forth in fury a whirling storm it shall whirl upon the head of the wicked but our Ahabi Jacob said upon those who pressed forward for it is said who pressed forward before their time whose foundation was poured out as a stream it is taught our Simeon the pious said these are the nine hundred and seventy four generations who pressed themselves forward to be created Talmud Mos Chagagog before the world was created but were not created the Holy One blessed be he arose and planted them in every generation and it is they who are the insolent of each generation but our Naman B Isaac said the words Asher come to indicate blessing. These are the scholars who wrinkle themselves over the words of the Torah in this world wherefore the Holy One blessed be he shall reveal a secret to them in the world to come for it is said to whom a secret is poured out as a stream Samuel said to our high Rabbo son of a great man come I will tell thee something from those excellent things which thy father has said every day ministering angels are created from the fiery stream and utter song and cease to be for it is said they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness now he differs from our Samuel be Namani for our Samuel be Namani said that our Jonathan said from every utterance that goes forth from the mouth of the Holy One blessed be he an angel is created for it is said by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth one verse says his rhyme was as white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool and elsewhere it is written his locks are curled and black as a raven. There is no contradiction one verse refers to God in session and the other in war for a master said in session none is more fitting than an old man and in war none is more fitting than a young man one passage says his throne was fiery flames and another passage says still thrones were places and one that was ancient of days did sit there is no contradiction one throne for him and one for David this is a view of our Akiba said our Jose the Galilean to him Akiba how long wilt thou treat it? Divine presence is profane rather it must mean one for justice and one for grace did he accept this explanation from him or did he not accept it come and hear one for justice and one for grace this is a view of our Akiba said our Eliezer be as right to him Akiba what hast thou to do with the Gaddis cease thy talk and turn to the laws concerning defilement through leprosy signs and tent covering rather it must mean one for a throne and one for a stool the throne to sit upon the stool for a Footrest for it is said the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footrest when our came he said eighteen curses did Isaiah pronounce upon Israel yet he was not pacified until he pronounced upon them this verse the child shall behave insolently against the aged and the base against the honorable which are the eighteen curses it is written for behold the Lord the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah stay and staff every stay of bread and every stay of water the mighty man and the man of war the judge and the prophet and the diviner and the elder the captain of fifty and the man of rank and the counselor and the wise charmer and the skillful enchanter and I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them stay this means the masters of the Bible staff this means the masters of the mission like our Judah Bitima and his colleagues our Papa and our rabbis dispute therein one says that there were six hundred orders of the mission and the other that there were seven hundred orders of the mission every stay of bread this means the masters of Talmud for it is said come eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled and every stay of water this means the masters of Agatha who draw the heart of man like water by means of the Agatha the mighty man this means the masters of traditions and the man of war this means one who knows how to dispute in the warfare of the Torah the judge this means a judge who passes judgment in strictest accord with truth the prophet according to the literal meaning of the word the divine of this means the king for it is said a divine sentence is in the lips of the king the elder this means one who is worthy to sit in session the captain of fifty do not read the captain of fifty but the captain of the Pentateuch it means one who knows how to argue in the five books of the Torah another explanation the captain of fifty is our about for our about said from here we Learn that a methodist may not be appointed over a congregation who is less than 50 years of age and a man of rank this means one for whose sake favor is shown to his entire generation like our Hannah of for instance on high or below like our Abba at the court of Caesar the counselor this means one who knows how to determine the intercalation of years and the fixation of months and the wise man this means a disciple who makes his teacher's wise charmer at the moment that he begins a Torah discourse all become dumb and the skillful man this means one who understands one thing from another enchanter this means one who is worthy to have imparted to him the words of the Torah which was given in a whisper and I will give children to be their princes what is the meaning of the words I will give children to be their princes our Eliezer said it means persons who are empty of good deeds and babes shall rule over them our Ahabi Jacob said it means foxes sons of foxes but he was not pacified until he said to them the child shall behave insolently against the aged those persons who are empty of good deeds shall behave insolently against such as are filled with good deeds as a pomegranate with seeds and the base against the honorable those to whom weighty precepts appear as light ones will come and behave insolently against those to whom light precepts appear as weighty ones are katna said even at the time of Jerusalem's downfall honest men did not cease from among them for it is said for a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father thou hast a mantle be thou our ruler matters on account of which men hide themselves as in a garment thou hast under thy hand and this ruin what is the meaning of the expression and this ruin matters which people do not grasp unless they stumble over them are under thy hand and that day shall he take an oath saying I am not a healer for in my house is neither bread nor a mantle ye shall not make me ruler of a people shall he take take expresses an oath for it is said thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain I am not a healer I was not of those who are bound to the schoolhouse for in my house is neither bread not a mantle for I possess no knowledge of Bible or Mishnah or Gemara but perhaps that case is different for had he said to them I have knowledge they would have said to him tell us then he could have answered that he had learned but had forgotten what then does it say I am not a healer it must mean I am not a healer at all but is it so behold Rabbah said Jerusalem was not destroyed until honest men cease therefrom for it is said run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if ye can find a man if there be any that doth justly that seek truth and I will pardon him there is no contradiction Talmud Mos Chagagabi the one verse refers to religious matters the other two Business in regard to religious matters there were honest men left in regard to business there were no honest men left our rabbis taught once our Yohanan Bizakai was riding on an ass when going on a journey and our Eliezer Birak was driving the ass from behind our Eliezer said to him master teach me a chapter of the work of the chariot he answered have I not taught you thus nor the work of the chariot in the presence of one unless he is a sage and understands of his own knowledge our Eliezer them said to him master permit me to say before thee something which thou hast taught me he answered say on forth with our Yohanan Bizakai dismounted from the ass and wrapped himself up and sat upon a stone beneath an olive tree said our Eliezer to him master wherefore didst thou dismount from the ass he answered is it proper that whilst thou art expounding the work of the chariot and the divine presence is with us and the ministering angels accompany us I should ride on the ass forth with our Eliezer Birak began his exposition of the work of the chariot and fire came down from heaven and encompassed all the trees in the field thereupon they all began to utter divine song what was the song they uttered praise the Lord from the earth yes he monsters and all heaps fruitful trees and all cedars hallelujah an angel then answered from the fire and said this is the
that have seen us moreover in my dream I and ye were reclining on Mount Sinai when a bath coal was sent to us saying ascend hither ascend hither here are great banqueting chambers and fine dining couches prepared for you, you and your disciples and your disciples disciples are designated for the third class but is this so for behold it is taught our Jose B our Judah said there were three discourses our Joshua discourse before our Yohanan B Zakai our Akiba discourse before our Joshua Hanania B Hakanai I discourse before our Akiba whereas our Eliezer B Iraq he does not count one who discoursed himself and others discourse before him he counts one who discoursed himself but others did not discourse before him he does not count but behold there is Hanania B Hakanai I before whom others did not discourse yet he counts him he at least discourse before one who discourse before others our rabbis taught four men entered the garden namely Ben and Ben Zoma and our Akiba our Akiba Said to them when ye arrive at the stones of pure marble, say not water, water, for it is said he that speak falsehood shall not be established before mine eyes. Ben is a cast a look and died of him. Scripture says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Ben Zoma looked and became demented of him. Scripture says, Hast thou found honey eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomited. I he mutilated the shoots, our Akiba departed unhurt. Ben Zoma was asked, Is it permitted to castrate a dog? He replied, Neither shall ye do this in your land as means to none that is in your land shall ye do thus. Ben Zoma was further asked, May a high priest marry a maiden who has become pregnant? Do we in such a case take into consideration Samuel's statement? For Samuel said, Talmud, Mos Chagagai, I can have repeated sexual connections without causing bleeding, or is perhaps the case of Samuel rare? He replied, The case of Samuel is rare, but we do. Consider the possibility that she may have conceived in a bath, but behold, Samuel said a spermatic commission that does not shoot forth like an arrow cannot fructify. In the first instance, it had also shot forth like an arrow. Our rabbis taught once our Joshua Bihanania was standing on a step on the temple mount, and Benzoma saw him and did not stand up before him. So our Joshua said to him once and with her Benzoma, he replied, I was gazing between the upper and the lower waters, and there is only a bare three fingers breadth between them, for it is said, and the spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters like a dove which hovers over her young without touching them. Thereupon our Joshua said to his disciples, Benzoma is still outside. See now when was it that the spirit of God hovered over the face of the water on the first day of creation, but the division took place on the second day, for it is written, and let it divide the waters from the waters, and how big is the interval are. Ahabi Jacob said as a hair's breadth and the rabbi said as between the boards of a landing bridge Marzitra or according to others R.C. said as between two cloaks spread one over the other and others say as between two cups tilted one over the other I have mutilated the shoots of him scripture says suffer not thy mouth to bring thy flesh into guilt what does it refer to he saw that permission was granted to Metatron to sit and write down the merits of Israel said he it is taught as a tradition that on high there is no sitting and no emulation and no back and no weariness perhaps God forfend there are two divinities thereupon they led Metatron forth and punished him with sixty fiery lashes saying to him why didst thou not rise before him when thou didst see him permission was then given to him to strike out the merits of Ahi a bath coal went forth and said return ye backsliding children except Ahi thereupon he said since I have been driven forth from yonder world let me go forth and enjoy this world. So Ahia went forth into evil courses. He went forth, found a harlot, and demanded her. She said to him, Art thou not Elisha Biabiah? But when he tore a radish out of its bed on the Sabbath and gave it to her, she said, It is another Ahia. After his apostasy, Ahia asked Armaeir a question, saying to him, What is the meaning of the verse God hath made even the one as well as the other? He replied, It means that for everything that God created, he created also its counterpart. He created mountains and created hills. He created seas and created rivers. Said Ahia to him, Arachiba, the master did not explain it thus, but as follows, He created righteous and created wicked. He created the Garden of Eden and created Gehenim. Everyone has two portions, one in the Garden of Eden and one in Gehenim. The righteous man being meritorious takes his own portions and his fellow's portion in the Garden of Eden. The wicked man being guilty takes his own portion and his Fellows portion in Gehinnom our measure she has said what is the biblical proof for this in the case of the righteous it is written therefore in their land they shall possess double in the case of the wicked it is written and destroy them with double destruction after his apostasy I hear asked Armeyer what is the meaning of the verse gold and glass cannot equal it neither shall the exchange thereof be vessels of fine gold he answered these are the words of the Torah which are hard to acquire like vessels of fine gold but are easily destroyed like vessels of glass said I hear to him our Akiba the master did not explain thus but as follows just as vessels of gold and vessels of glass though they be broken have a remedy even so a scholar though he has sinned has a remedy thereupon Armeyer said to him then thou to repent he replied I have already heard from behind the veil return ye backsliding children except I hear our rabbis taught once I hear was riding on a horse on the Sabbath and are Meir was walking behind him to learn Torah at his mouth said Ahir to him Meir turn back for I have already measured by the paces of my horse that thus far extends the Sabbath limit he replied thou to go back Ahir answered have I not already told thee that I have already heard from behind the veil return ye backsliding children except Ahir our Meir prevailed upon him and took him to a schoolhouse Ahir said to a child recite for me thy verse the child answered there is no peace Seth the Lord unto the wicked he then took him to another schoolhouse Ahir said to a child recite for me thy verse he answered for though thou wash thee with nitre and take thee much soap yet thine iniquity is marked before me Seth the Lord God he took him to yet another schoolhouse and Ahir said Talmud Mos Chagagabi to a child recite for me thy verse he answered and thou that art spoiled what doest thou that thou clothest thyself with scarlet that thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold that thou enlargest thine eyes with paint in vain, dost thou make thyself fair, etc. He took him to yet another schoolhouse until he took him to thirteen schools, all of them quoted in similar vein when he said to the last one, Recite for my verse, he answered, But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, etc. That child was a stutterer, so it sounded as though he answered, But to Elisha God saith, Some say that I had a knife with him, and he cut him up and sent him to the thirteen schools, and some say that he said, Had I a knife in my hand, I would have cut him up when I died. They said, Let him not be judged, nor let him enter the world to come, let him not be judged, because he engaged in the study of the Torah, nor let him enter the world to come, because he sent Armeyer said, It were better that he should be judged, and that he should enter the world to come when I die, I shall cause smoke to rise from his grave when Armeyer died, smoke rose up from Ahir's grave. Are. Yohanan said what a mighty deed to burn his master there was one amongst us and we cannot save him if I were to take him by the hand who would snatch him from me but said he when I die I shall extinguish the smoke from his grave when our Yohanan died the smoke ceased from Ahia's grave the public mourner began his oration concerning him thus even the janitor could not stand before the O master Ahia's daughter once came before Rabbi and said to him O master support me he asked her whose daughter art thou she replied I am Ahia's daughter said he or any of his children left in the world behold it is written he shall have neither son nor son son among his people nor any remaining in his dwelling she answered remember his Torah and not his deeds forth with the fire came down and enveloped Rabbi's bench thereupon Rabbi wept and said if it be so on account of those who desire her how much more so on account of those who honor her but how did Armeyer learn Torah at the mouth of Ahia behold Rabbi Barhanna said that our Yohanan said what is the meaning of the verse for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts this means that if the teacher is like an angel of the Lord of hosts they should seek the law at his mouth but if not they should not seek the law at his mouth Resh Lakish answered Armeyer found a verse and expounded it as follows incline thine ear and hear the words of it wise and apply thy heart unto my knowledge it does not say unto their knowledge but unto my knowledge our Hannah said he decided it from here hearken O daughter and consider and incline thine ear forget also thine own people and thy father's house etc the verses contradict one another there is no contradiction in the one case scripture refers to an adult in the other to a child when our Demi came to
Towers for the top 300 halajah concerning a tower which flies in the air and RMI said 300 questions did Doug and Ahitafel raise concerning a tower which flies in the air yet we have learned three kings and four commoners have no share in the world to come what then shall become of us said Samuel to him O king scholar there was impurity in their hearts but what of Ahia Greek song did not cease from his mouth it is told of Ahia that when he used to rise to go. From the schoolhouse many heretical books used to fall from his lap Namos the weaver asked Armadir does all wool that goes down into the dying kettle come up properly died he replied all that was clean on its mother comes up properly died all that was not clean on its mother does not come up properly died Arakiba went up unheard and went down unheard and of him scripture says draw me we will run after thee and Arakiba to the ministering angel sought to thrust away but the holy one. Blessed be he said to them let this elder be for he is worthy to avail himself of my glory Talmud, Mos Chagagag by what biblical exposition was he able to learn this Rabbi Bibar Hanna said that our Yohanan said and he came from the myriads holy he is the sign among his myriad and our Abab said he is preeminent above ten thousand he is the example among his myriad and Resh said the Lord of hosts is his name he is the Lord among his host and our high Abba said that our Yohanan said. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice and behold the Lord passed by our rabbis taught six things are said concerning demons in regard to three they are like the ministering angels and in regard to three like human beings in regard to three they are like the ministering angels they have wings like the ministering angels and they fly from one end of the world to the other like the ministering angels and they know what will happen like the ministering angels you say they know you cannot mean that rather they hear from behind the veil like the ministering angels and in regard to three they are like human beings they eat and drink like human beings they propagate like human beings and they die like human beings six things are said of human beings in regard to three they are like the ministering angels and in Regard to three, they are like beasts. In regard to three, they are like the ministering angels. They have understanding like the ministering angels, and they walk erect like the ministering angels, and they can talk in the holy tongue like the ministering angels. In regard to three, they are like beasts. They eat and drink like beasts, and they propagate like beasts, and they relieve themselves like beasts. Whosoever speculates upon four things, it were a mercy if he had not come into the world, etc. Granted, as regards what is above, what is beneath, what will be after that as well. But as regards what was before, what happened, happened. Both our Yohanan and Reshlakish say it is like a human king who said to his servants, "Build for me a great palace upon the dunghill." They went and built it for him. It is not the king's wish that's forth to have the name of the dunghill mentioned. Whosoever takes no thought for the honor of his maker, it were a mercy if he had not come into the world. What does this mean? Our Abba said it refers to one who looks at the rainbow. Our Joseph said it refers to one who commits transgression in secret. One who looks at a rainbow, for it is written as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Our Joseph said it refers to one who commits a transgression in secret in accordance with our Isaac's teaching. For our Isaac said, when anyone commits a transgression in secret, it is as though he thrust aside the feet of the divine presence. For it is said, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. But is this so? For behold, our lady elder said, if a man sees that his evil inclination is prevailing upon him, let him go to a place where he is not known and put on black garments and wrap himself up in black garments and let him do what his heart desires. But let him not profane the name of heaven publicly. There is. No contradiction. The one case speaks of one who is able to overcome his evil inclination. The other case of one who is not able to overcome his evil inclination. Arjuna B. Arnamani, the speaker of Resh Lakish, expounded anyone who looks at three things, his eyes become dim at the rainbow and at the prince and at the priest at the rainbow, because it is written as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. At the prince, for it is written, and thou shalt put up thy honor upon him. One who looks at the priest at the time when the temple existed, when they stood upon their platform and blessed Israel with the distinguished name of God. Arjuna, son of Arnamani, the speaker of Resh Lakish, expounded what is the meaning of the verse: Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a familiar friend. If the evil inclination say to thee sin and the holy one bless be, he will pardon, believe it not for it. He said, Trust ye not in a friend, and friend Arya means none other than one's evil inclination, for it is said, For the inclination of man's heart is evil Arya, and familiar friend means none other than the Holy One, blessed be he, for it is said, Thou art the familiar friend of my youth, perhaps thou wilt say, Who testifies against me, the stones of a man's home and the beams of his house testify against him, for it is said, For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. But the sages say, A man's soul testifies against him, for it is said, Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom, what is it that lies in a man's bosom, you must say, It is the soul. Arzeric said, Two ministering angels that accompany him testify against him, for it is said, For he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, but the sages say, A man's limbs testify against him, for it is said, Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and I am God. Mishnah Hosea B. Joezer says that on a festival day the laying on of hands on the head of a sacrifice may not be performed. Joseph B. Yohanan says that it may be performed. Joshua B. Parahia says that it may not be performed. Nittai the Arbalite says that it may be performed. Judah B. Tarbay says that it may not be performed. Simeon A. Shada says that it may be performed. Shimei says that it may be performed. Abtalion says that it may not be performed. Hillel and Menahem did not differ. Menahem went. For Chamai entered Chamai says that it may not be performed. Hillel says that it may be performed. Talmud, Mos Chagagabi, the former of each peer were princes and the latter were heads of the court. Gemara our rabbis taught the three of the former peers who said that the laying on of the hands may not be performed and the two of the latter peers who said that it may be performed were princes and the others were heads of the court. This is the view of our Meir, but the sages say Judah B. Tarbay. Was head of the court and Simeon B. Shada was prince who taught the following teaching of our rabbis Arjuna B. Tobay said, May I see consolation if I did not have a Zomem witness put to death as a demonstration against the Sadducees who said that Zomem witnesses were not to be put to death unless through their false evidence the accused had already been put to death said Simeon B. Shada to him, May I see consolation if thou didst not shed innocent blood for the sages said Zomem. Witnesses are not put to death until both of them have been proved Zomem and they are not flogged until both of them have been proved Zomem and they are not ordered to pay money as damages until both of them have been proved Zomem. Forthwith Judah B. Tobay undertook never to give a decision except in the presence of Simeon B. Shada all his days Judah B. Tobay prostrate himself on the grave of the executed man and his voice used to be heard the people believed that it was the voice of the executed man, but he said to them, It is my voice, ye shall know this by the fact that on the morrow when I die, my voice will not be heard. Araha, the son of Rabbah, said to Arashi, But perhaps he appeased him, or the deceased summoned him to judgment. According to whom will this be granted? If you say it is according to Armadir, who said that Simeon B. Shada was head of the court, and Arjuna B. Tabe was prince, that is why he decided points of law in the presence of Simeon B. Shada. But if you say it is according to the rabbis who say that Judah B. Tabe was head of the court, and Simeon B. Shada was prince, how may the head of the court decide points of law in the presence of the prince? No undertook is to be understood with reference to association. He said, I will not even join with other judges to give a decision unless Simeon B. Shada is present. Menahem went forth, and Shammai entered, etc. Whither did he go forth? Abbe said he went forth into evil courses. Rabbah said he. Went forth to the king's service, thus it is also taught Menahem went forth to the king's service, and there went forth with him eighty peers of disciples dressed in silk. Arshim and B. Abba said that our Yohanan said, Never let the principle of Shabbat rest be unimportant in thy eyes, for the laying on of the hands on a festival day is prohibited only on account of Shabbat. Yet the great men of the age differed thereon, but is this not already quite clear? It is required on account of a precept. The fulfillment of which is prohibited as Shabbat, but is not that too quite clear? It is required to
pointed out that it was no laying on of the hands at all rmi said his argument runs firstly and secondly firstly it was no laying on of the hands at all and secondly it was done in order to gratify the women our papa said one may conclude from this that it is forbidden on a holy day to make use of the sides of an animal for if you suppose that it is permitted to make use of the sides let the hands be laid on the side it must be concluded therefore that it is forbidden to make use of besides talmud mas chagigai arashi said you may even say that it is permitted to use the sides but all that is connected with the back is as the back mission of that shamai say peace offerings may be brought on the festival day and the hands not laid thereon but not burnt offerings and beth hillel say both peace offerings and burnt offerings may be brought and the hands laid thereon if the festival of weeks fell on a friday beth shamai say the day for slaughter is after the sabbath and Beth Hillel say the day for slaughter is not after the Sabbath. They agree, however, that if it fall on the Sabbath, the day for slaughter is after the Sabbath. The high priest does not in that case put on his special robes, and mourning and fasting are permitted in order not to confirm the view of those who say that the festival of weeks invariably follows the Sabbath. Gemara R. Eliezer said that our Ashai said, whence is it to be deduced that the offerings of the feast of weeks can be made? Good throughout seven days it is said on the feast of unleavened bread and on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles. Thus scripture compares the feast of weeks with the feast of unleavened bread, just as the offerings of the feast of unleavened bread can be made good throughout seven days, so too the offerings of the feast of weeks can be made good throughout seven days. But let me say that scripture compares the feast of weeks to the feast of tabernacles, just as the Offerings of the Feast of Tabernacles can be made good throughout eight days, so too the offerings of the Feast of Weeks can be made good throughout eight days. The eighth day is a festival by itself, but is not the statement that the eighth is a festival true only in regard to the balloting by the watches, the recital of the benediction of the season, the name of the festival, the prescribed number of sacrifices, the temple song, and the blessing, but regarding the making good of it. Offerings it makes good for the first day of Tabernacles, for we have learned he who did not bring his festival offering on the first festival day of the feast may bring it during the whole of the festival, even on the last festival day. If you take hold of much, you do not hold it, but if you take hold of a little, you hold it for what legal instruction then did the divine Lord again here the Feast of Tabernacles to compare it with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, just as the Feast of Unleavened bread requires the pilgrim to stay the night in Jerusalem, so too the Feast of Tabernacles requires the pilgrim to stay the night, and whence do we deduce it in the case of the former Talmud, Mas Chagigabi, it is written, and thou shalt turn in the morning and go into thy tents. We have learned if the Feast of Weeks fall on a Friday, Beth Shammai say the day for slaughter is after the Sabbath, and Beth Hillel say it has no day for slaughter, surely this means that it has no day for slaughter at all. No, it means that it does not require a special day for slaughter, but what then does it teach us that we can offer up the sacrifice on its proper day? Behold, they already dispute thereon once, for we have learned Beth Shammai say peace offerings may be brought on the festival day, and the hands not laid thereon, but not burnt offerings, and Beth Hillel say both peace offerings and burnt offerings may be brought, and the hands laid thereon, both statements are required for if. The mission had taught us only that they differ in the latter case I might have thought in that case only Beth Shammai hold this view because it is possible to bring the offerings on the following day but in the former case I might have thought that they agreed with Beth Hillel and if the mission had taught us only that they differ in the former case I might have thought in this case only Beth Hillel hold this view because it is not possible to bring the offering on the following day but in the latter case I might have thought that they agree with Beth Shammai therefore both statements are required come and here he who does not bring his festal offering during the seven days of Passover or the eight days of tabernacles or on the first festival day of the feast of weeks can no longer bring his offering this must surely mean on the festival day proper of the feast of weeks no it means on the day for the slaughter if so let us conclude therefom that there is only one day for slaughter. Read on the days for slaughter. Come and hear Rabbi Samuel learn. Count the days and sanctify the new moon day. Count the days and sanctity the feast of weeks. Just as the new moon festival belongs to its class of days by which it is determined, so the feast of weeks belongs to its class by which it is determined. Surely then the feast of weeks is compared with the new moon festival because just as the offerings of the new moon festival are to be brought on one day, so too the offerings of the feast of weeks are to be brought on one day. Rabbi answered, How can you think so? Do we then count for the feast of weeks only the days and not the weeks? Behold, Abbe said, It is a precept to count the days for it is written, Ye shall number fifty days, and it is a precept to count the weeks for it is written, Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Furthermore, it is written, The feast of weeks, the school of our Eliezer B. Jacob taught scripture says, and yet. Shall make proclamation and, and when you reap which is the feast on which you proclaim and reap you must say it is the feast of weeks now when should one say on the festival day itself is reaping and permitted on the festival day it must refer therefore to the period after the feast when the offerings can still be made good now although the statement of our Eliezer in the name of our Ashai has been quoted the teaching of our Eliezer B. Jacob is also required for if we had only the statement of our Eliezer in the name of our Ashai I might say just as in the period during which the offering can be made good in the case of the feast of unleavened bread it is forbidden to do work so too in the period during which the offering can be made good in the case of the feast of weeks it is forbidden to do work therefore we are told the teaching of our Eliezer B. Jacob and if we had only the teaching of our Eliezer B. Jacob Talmud Mas Chagigai I would not know how many days therefore we are told the statement of our Eliezer in the name of our Ashai Rush Lakish said it is written and the feast of harvest which is the feast on which you feast and harvest you must say it is the feast of weeks now when should one say on the festival day itself is reaping and permitted on the festival day it must refer therefore to the period after the feast when the offerings can still be made good said are you hand unto him now accordingly since it is written the feast of ingathering one can likewise argue thus which is the feast on which there is ingathering you must say it is the feast of tabernacles when should one say on the festival day itself is work then permitted on a festival day it must refer therefore to the mid festival days but is work then permitted on the mid festival days it must mean therefore the feast that comes at the season of ingathering similarly here it means the feast that comes at the season of reaping it follows therefore that both are of it. Opinion that on the mid festival days it is forbidden to do work whence is this derived for our rabbis taught the feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep seven days this teaches concerning the mid festival days that work thereon is forbidden this is a view of our Josiah our Jonathan says this is unnecessary it can be proved by an argument of menor and majus if on the first and seventh days which have no sanctity before or after them work is forbidden how much more so is it right that work should be forbidden on the mid festival days which have sanctity before and after them but the six working days disprove this argument for they have sanctity before them and after them and yet work thereon is permitted nowhere as this applies to the six working days which have no additional sacrifice can you say the same of the mid festival days which have an additional sacrifice but the new moon day disproves this argument for it has additional sacrifices and yet work thereon is Permitted nowhere as this applies to the new moon day which is not called the holy convocation can you say the same of the mid festival days which are called holy convocation since it is called holy convocation it is only right that work thereon should be forbidden another Mary the taught ye shall do no matter of servile work this teaches that it is forbidden to do work on mid festival days this is the view of our Jose the Galilean our Akiva says this is unnecessary it is said these are the appointed seasons of the Lord etc whereof does the verse speak if of the first day behold it has already been said solemn rest if of the seventh day behold it has already been said solemn rest the verse therefore must speak only of the mid festival days to teach thee that it is forbidden to do work thereon another Mary the taught six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread and on the seventh day shall be restrained of work unto to the Lord just as the seventh day is under restraint in respect of work so the six days are under restraint in respect of work if you should think that just as the seventh day is under restraint in respect of all manner of work so the six days are under restraint in respect of all manner of work therefore scripture teaches and on the seventh day shall be restraint of work only the seventh day is under restraint in respect of all manner of work but the six days are not under restraint in respect of
is prohibited from partaking of hallowed things if one bathed for hallowed things and intended to be rendered fit solely for hallowed things one is prohibited from touching the waters of purification if one bathed for something possessing a stricter degree of sanctity one is permitted to have contact with something possessing a lighter degree of sanctity if one bathed but without special intention it is as though one had not bathed the garments of an amhirez possess midras uncle ns for pharisees the garments of pharisees possess midras uncleanness for those who eat terima the garments of those who eat terima possess midras uncleanness for those who eat hallowed things the garments of those it yet does not render the person fit to eat food possessing any degree of sanctity similarly in the cases that follow intention for one degree of sanctity does not enable one to partake of food having a higher degree of sanctity who eat hallowed things possess midras Uncle Anes for those who occupy themselves with the waters of purification Jose B. Joezer was the most pious in the priesthood yet his apron was considered to possess midras uncleanness for those who ate hallowed things Yohanan B. Gajada used all his life to eat unconsecrated food in accordance with the purity required for hallowed things yet his apron was considered to possess midras uncleanness for those who occupy themselves with the water of purification Gemara do. Unconsecrated food and second tithe then require rinsing of the hands now we can show this to conflict with the following mission of four terima and first fruits one may incur the penalty of death or a fine of an added fifth and they are prohibited to non-priests and they are the property of the priest and are neutralized in 101 parts and require rinsing of the hands and sunset these rules apply to terima and first fruits but not to second tithe how much less than two. Unconsecrated food thus there is a contradiction in regard to second tithe and a contradiction also in regard to unconsecrated food granted that in regard to second tithe it can be shown that there is no contradiction the one mission is according to our Meir and the other is according to the rabbis for we have learned whosoever requires immersion by enactment of the scribes defile hallowed things and invalidates terima but is permitted to eat unconsecrated food and second tithe this is the view of our Meir but the sages prohibit in the case of second tithe in regard to unconsecrated food however there is a contradiction there is no contradiction the one case refers to eating unconsecrated food and the other to touching it to this Arshim Ibi Ashi demurred the rabbis differ from our Meir only in regard to the eating of second tithe but in regard to the touching of second tithe and the eating of unconsecrated food they do not differ both Mishnahs therefore must refer to eating but there is no contradiction the one refers to the eating of bread the other refers to the eating of fruit for our naman said whosoever rinses his hands for fruit belongs to the haughty of spirit our rabbis taught he who raises his hands if he did so with intention his hands are levitically clean but if he did so without intention his hands are unclean similarly one who bathes his hands if he did so with intention his hands are clean but if he did so without intention his hands are unclean but behold it is taught whether he did it with intention or without intention his hands are clean our naman answered there is no contradiction the one statement refers to unconsecrated food talmud moscagi the other to second tithe and whence do you infer that unconsecrated food does not require intention for we have learned if a wave was sundered from a sea and contained 40 seahs and it fell upon a person or upon vessels that were unclean they become clean thus a person is likened to vessels just as vessels have no intention so too the Mishnah speaks of a person who had no intention but why so perhaps we are dealing with a case where one was sitting and waiting for the wave to become sundered and so vessels are likened to a person just as a person is capable of intention so too in the case of the vessels one had intention with regard to them and should you say if it is a case of one who sits and waits for the wave to be sundered what need is there to teach it I will answer you might have thought it should be prohibited as a preventive measure to bathe in a detached wave lest one come to battle in a torrent of rainwater or that we ought to prohibit as a preventive measure immersion in the ends of the wave on account of the crest therefore the Mishnah teaches us that we make no such prohibition and whence do you infer that one may not immerse vessels in the crest of the wave for it is taught one may immerse vessels in the Ends of the wave but not in the crest because one may not immerse in the air rather is it to be inferred from that which we have learned if produce fell into a channel of water and one whose hands were unclean put out his hands and took it his hands became clean and the law of water be put on does not apply to the produce but if he did so in order that his hands should be rinsed his hands become clean but the law of water be put on applies to the produce rabble put an objection to our nomin if one bathed for unconsecrated food and intended to be rendered fit solely for unconsecrated food one is prohibited from partaking of second tithe thus if one intended to be rendered fit therefore one may eat unconsecrated food but if one did not intend to be rendered fit therefore one may not eat unconsecrated food this is the meaning even though one had intention for unconsecrated one is still prohibited from partaking of second tithe he put another objection to him if one bathed but without special intention it is as though one had not bathed surely it means that he is as though he had not bathed at all no it means that he is as though he had not bathed for second tithe but did bathe for unconsecrated food he thought at first that he was merely putting him off but he went forth examined the matter and found that it is taught if one bathed but without special intention one is prohibited from partaking of second tithe but one is permitted to partake of unconsecrated food our Eliezer said if a man bathed and came up he may intend to be rendered fit for whatever he pleases an objection was raised if he still has one foot in the water and he had intended to be rendered fit for something of lesser sanctity he may intend to be rendered fit for something of higher sanctity but once he has come up he can no longer have intention surely it means that he can no longer have any intention at all no it means that if he Still has one foot in the water even though he intended to render himself fit for a lesser degree of sanctity he may still intend to render himself fit for a higher degree of sanctity but once he has come up if he had no intention to be rendered fit for anything at all he may now intend to be rendered fit but if he had intention to be rendered fit for any particular degree of sanctity he may no longer intend to be rendered fit for any higher degree of sanctity who is the author of the teaching if he still has one foot in the water etc. Our pet said it is according to our Judah for we have learned if an immersion pool was measured and found to contain exactly 40 seahs of water and two persons went down and immersed themselves therein one after the other the first person is clean but the second is unclean our Judah said if the feet of the first person were still touching the water when the second person immersed himself the second person is also clean our Naman said. That Rabbi Biaboa said the dispute concerns only the rabbinical degrees of purity but in a case of purification from real uncleanness all would agree that the second person remains unclean this then is in agreement with the view of our Pedaf another version is Arnaman said that Rabbi Biaboa said the dispute concerns purification from real uncleanness but in regard to the rabbinical degrees of purity all would agree that the second person too becomes clean thus he differs from it. View of our Pedaf said I ask our Yohan and according to our Judah is it permissible to immerse needles and hooks in the wet head of the first bather does our Judah accept only the principle of connecting downward but not of connecting upward or perhaps our Judah accepts the principle of connecting upward as well he replied you have learned it if a wadi has three depressions one at the top one at the bottom and one in the middle the one at the top and the one at the bottom containing twenty. Seahs each and the middle 140 Seahs and a torrent of rainwater passes between them. Our Judah says Meir used to say one may immerse in the top one Talmud, Mos Chagagabi, but it is taught our Judah said Meir used to say one may immerse in the top one, but I say one may immerse only in the bottom one, but not in the top one. He replied, If it is expressly taught, it is taught if one bathed for unconsecrated food and intended to be rendered fit solely for unconsecrated food, etc. According to whom will our mission be? Presumably, it is according to the rabbis who distinguish between unconsecrated food and second tithe, but then how will you understand the second part of the mission of the garments of an Am Hirez possess midras uncleanness for Pharisees? The garments of Pharisees possess midras uncleanness for those who eat terima. This will be according to our Meir who said that unconsecrated food and second tithe are in this respect the same, thus the first part of the Mishnah will be according to the rabbis and the second part according to our Meir. Indeed, the first part of the Mishnah is according to the rabbis and the second part according to our Meir. Our Ahabi Adda teaches also in the second part of the Mishnah five degrees and attributes it all to the rabbis. Our Mari said it follows that unconsecrated food which was prepared according to the purity of hallowed things is like hallowed things. Whence is this to be
For those who occupy themselves with the water of purification but not for hallowed things thus the Mishnah holds that unconsecrated food which was prepared according to the purity of hallowed things is like hallowed things Arjanathan B. Eliezer said if a man's wrap fell from off him and he said to his fellow give it to me and he gave it to him it is unclean Arjanathan B. Amrom said if by mistake a man put his Sabbath garments on instead of his weekday garments they become unclean R. Eliezer Bizotic said once two scholarly women took one another's garments by mistake in the bathhouse and the matter came before our Akiba and he declared them unclean to the Sarashai demurred if so if a man stretched forth his hand to the basket with the intention of taking wheat bread and there came up in his hand barley bread has it also become unclean and should you say it is so then behold it is taught if one guards a jug on the assumption that it is a jug of wine and it is found to be a jug of oil it is clean so as not to defile but according to your reasoning how do you understand the concluding clause of the Beritha but it may not be consumed why said our Jeremiah it refers to a case where the keeper says I guarded it against anything that might defile it but not against anything that might invalidate it but can anything be half guarded indeed for it is taught if a man stretched forth his hand into the basket and the basket was on his shoulder and the shovel was in. The basket and his mind was on the basket but not on the shovel. The basket is clean and the shovel is unclean. Now it says the basket is clean. Surely the shovel should make the basket unclean. One vessel does not make another unclean. Then it should make the contents of the basket unclean. Robin has said it refers to a case where the keeper says I guarded it the shovel against anything that might defile it but not against anything that might invalidate it. In any case there is a contradiction. And furthermore Rabbi Abba raised an objection once a woman came before our Ishmael and said to him Master I have woven this garment in purity but it was not in my mind to guard it in purity but as a result of the cross-examination to which our Ishmael subjected her she said to him Master a menstruous woman pulled the cord with me said our Ishmael how great are the words of the sages who used to say if one had the intention to guard a thing it is clean if one did not have the intention to guard. It is unclean. There was another story of a woman who came before our Ishmael. She said to him, Master, I wove this cloth in purity, but it was not in my mind to guard it. But as a result of the cross examination to which our Ishmael subjected her, she said to him, Master, a thread broke and I tied it with my mouth. Said our Ishmael, How great are the words of the sages who used to say, If it is in one's mind to guard a thing, it is clean. If it is not in one's mind to guard it, it is unclean. Granted, in regard to the teaching of our Eliezer Bizotic, it can be explained that each one of the women says to herself, My companion is the wife of an Amhiras, and consequently she takes her mind off it. In regard to the teaching of our Jonathan B. Amrom, too, it can be explained that since a man takes special care of Sabbath garments, it is as though he took his mind off them. But in regard to the teaching of our Jonathan B. Eliezer, it can be objected that he could still guard it in the hand of his. Companion are Yohanan answered it is a presumable certainty that one does not guard what is in the hand of his companion indeed no Talmud, Mos Chagagabi but behold it is taught if a man's ass and workmen were laden with levitically clean goods even if he withdrew from them more than a mill his clean goods remain clean but if he said to them go yeah and I shall come after you then as soon as they are hidden from his sight his clean goods become unclean in what respect is the first case. Different from the second are Isaac Napaha said in the first case he purifies his ass and workmen for this purpose if so it applies to the second case too and Amhiras does not mind another's touching if so it applies to the first case too it is a case where the master can come upon them suddenly by roundabout path if so it applies to the second case too since he said to them go yeah and I shall come after you their minds are at ECHAPTERIII mission greater. Stringency applies to hallowed THL and GS and to terima for vessels within vessels may be immersed together for terima but not for hallowed things that outside and inside and handle of a vessel are regarded as separate for terima but not for hallowed things he that carries anything possessing midras uncleanness may carry at the same time terima but not hallowed things the garments of those who eat terima posses midras uncleanness for those who eat hallowed things the rule for the immersion of garments for those who would eat of terima is not like the rule for those who would eat of hallowed things for in the case of hallowed things he must first untie any knots in the unclean garment dry it if it is wet then immerse it and afterwards retie it but in case of terima it may first be tied and afterwards immerse vessels that have been finished in purity require immersion before they are used for hallowed things but not before they are used for terima. Vessel unites all its contents for defilement in the case of hallowed things, but not in the case of terima. Hallowed things become invalid by Uncle Anas at the fourth remove, but terima only by Uncle Anas at the third remove. In the case of terima, if one hand of a man became unclean, the other remains clean. But in the case of hallowed things, he must immerse both hands because the one hand defiles the other for hallowed things, but not for terima. Dry footstuffs may be eaten with unwash. Add hands with terima, but not with hallowed things. Talmud, Mos a mourner prior to the burial of the deceased and one who needs to bring his atonement sacrifice in order to complete his purification require immersion for hallowed things, but not for terima. Gemara, why not in the case of hallowed things? Rl said because the weight of the inner vessel forms an interposition, but since the latter clause of the mission is based on the rule of interposition, for it is taught in. The latter clause the rule for the immersion of garments for those who would eat of terima is not like the rule for those who would eat of hallowed things for in the case of hallowed things he must first untie any knots in the unclean garment dry it if it is wet then immerse it and afterwards retie it but in the case of terima it may first be tied and afterwards immerse both the former clause and the latter clause are based on the rule of interposition and they are both required for if the mission taught us the former clause only I might have thought that the reason why it is not permitted to immerse vessels within vessels for hallowed things is because of the weight of the vessel which interposes but in the latter clause where there is no weight of a vessel to interpose I might have thought that it would not be deemed an interposition even for hallowed things and if the mission taught us the latter clause I might have thought that the reason why it is not permitted in the case of hallowed things is because Talmud, Mos Chagagabi a not becomes tightened in water but in the case of the former clause where the water causes the vessel to float it would not be deemed an interposition therefore both clauses are required RL in explaining the former clause to be based on the rule of interposition is consistent in his view for RL said that our Hanan B. Papa said ten distinctions of hallowed things over Terimah are taught here. The former five apply both to hallowed things and to unconsecrated food prepared according to the purity of hallowed things the latter five apply to hallowed things but not to unconsecrated food prepared according to the purity of hallowed things what is the reason the former five which involve the risk of eventual violation of the law of impurity according to the Torah the rabbis enacted both in regard to hallowed things and in regard to unconsecrated food prepared according to the Purity of hallowed things the latter five which do not involve the risk of the eventual violation of the law of purity according to the Torah the rabbis enacted in regard to hallowed things but not in regard to unconsecrated food prepared according to the purity of hallowed things rabbis said since the latter clause is based on the rule of interposition the former clause cannot be based on the rule of interposition and as to the former clause the reason is this it is a precautionary enactment so that one might not immerse needles and hooks in a vessel the mouth of which is not the size of the spout of a skin bottle as we have learned the union of immersion pools requires a connecting stream the size of the spout of a skin bottle in breadth Talmud, Mos Chagagaya and an area namely one in which two fingers can make a complete revolution thus he Rabbah agrees with Arnaman who said that Rabbi Abba said eleven distinctions are taught here the former six apply both to Hallowed things and to unconsecrated food which was prepared according to the purity of hallowed things the latter five apply to the hallowed things but not to unconsecrated food prepared according to the purity of hallowed things what is the practical difference between the explanations of Rabbah and Arla there is a practical difference between them in the case of a basket or a net which was filled with vessels and immersed according to the view that the former clause is based on the rule of interposition it applies here too according to the view that the former clause is a precautionary enactment lest one immerse needles and hooks in a vessel the mouth of which is not the size of a spout of a skin bottle it does not apply here because there is no basket or net the mouth of which is not the size of a skin bottle now Rabbah is consistent in his view for Rabbah said if one filled the basket or net with vessels and immerse them they become clean but if an immersion
For whom do we state this rule for associates? Associates know the rules of immersion very well if so it should apply to hallowed things to an amharas may see it and go and immerse likewise in the case of Terramatu an amharas may see it and go and immerse likewise we do not accept it from him let us not accept hallowed things either from him he would bear animosity in the case of Terramatu he will bear animosity in the case of Terramatu he does not mind for he can go and give it to his fellow priest who is an amharas and who is a tana who takes account of animosity it is our Jose for it is taught our Jose said wherefore are all trusted throughout the year in regard to the cleanness of the wine and oil they bring for temple else it is in order that everyone may not go and give and build a high place for himself and burn a red heifer for himself our papa said according to whom is it that we accept nowadays the testimony of an amharas according to whom According to our Jose, but should we not apprehend the contingency of borrowing by an associate? For we have learned an earthenware vessel protects everything therein from contracting uncleanness from a corpse that is under the same roof. So Beth Hillel Beth Shammai say it protects only foodstuffs and liquids and other earthenware vessels. Said Beth Hillel to Beth Shammai, wherefore Beth Shammai answered, because it is unclean on account of the image Ares and an unclean vessel cannot interpose. Said Beth Hillel to them, but have you not declared the foodstuffs and liquids therein clean? Beth Shammai answered, when we declared the foodstuffs and liquids therein clean Talmud, Mos Chagagabi, we declared them clean only for the Amharas himself, but should we therefore declare also the vessel clean which would make it clean for thee as well as for him? It is taught our Joshua said, I am ashamed of your words, O Beth Shammai, is it possible that if a woman in the upper chamber needs? Though in the trough the woman and the trough become unclean for seven days, but the dough remains clean. That if there is in the upper room a flask full of liquid, the flask contracts seven day uncleanness, but the liquid remains clean. Thereupon one of the disciples of Beth Shammai joined him in debate and said to him, I will tell thee the reason of Beth Shammai. He replied, Tell then. So he said to him, Does all unclean vessel bar the penetration of uncleanness or not? He replied, It does not bar. It are the vessels of an Amharas clean or unclean? He replied, Unclean. And if thou sayest to him that they are unclean, will he pay any heed to thee? Nay, more if thou sayest to him that they are unclean, he will reply, Mine are clean and thine are unclean. Now this is the reason of Beth Shammai. Forthwith our Joshua went and prostrate himself upon the graves of Beth Shammai. He said, I crave your pardon, bones of Beth Shammai. If your unexplained teachings are so excellent, how much more so that Explained teachings it is said that all his days his teeth were black by reason of his fast now it says for thee as well as for him accordingly we may borrow from them when we borrow vessels from them we immerse them if so Beth Hillel could have replied to Beth Shammai when we borrow vessels from them we immerse them and which is rendered unclean by a corpse requires sprinkling on the third and seventh day and people do not lend a vessel for seven days but are they not trusted in regard to immersion for behold it is taught the Amharas is trusted in regard to the purification by immersion of that which is rendered unclean by a corpse have answered there is no contradiction the one teaching refers to his body the other to his vessels Rabbah answered both refer to his vessels but there is no contradiction the one refers to a case where he says I have never immersed one vessel in another the other refers to a case where he says I have immersed one vessel in another but I have not immersed in a vessel the mouth of which is not the size of the spout of a skin bottle for it is taught in Amharas is believed if he says the produce has not been rendered susceptible to uncleanness but he is not believed if he says the produce has been rendered susceptible to uncleanness but it has not been made unclean but is he trusted in regard to his body for behold it is taught if an associate comes to receive sprinkling they at once sprinkle upon him but if an M. Harris comes to receive sprinkling they do not sprinkle upon him until he observes before us the third and seventh day of a answered as a result of the stringency you impose upon him at the beginning you make it easier for him at the end the outside and the inside what is meant by the outside and the inside as we have learned if the outside of a vessel was rendered unclean by unclean liquid only its outside becomes unclean but the inside room hanger and handles remain clean but if it Inside became unclean the whole is unclean and handle what is meant by the handle Rab Judah said that Samuel said the part by which one hands it and thus it says and they handed her parched corn RC said that our Yohanan said the part where the fastidious hold it or by recited before our nom and there is no differentiation in the case of uncleanness between the outside and the inside of any vessel be it for the hallowed things of the sanctuary be it for the hallowed things of it. Provinces said the latter to him what is meant by the hallowed things of the provinces Terima but we have learned that outside and inside and handle are regarded as separate for Terima perhaps you mean unconsecrated food prepared according to the purity of hallowed things indeed you have recalled something to my mind for Rabbi Abuah said eleven distinctions are taught here in our mission the former six apply both to hallowed things and to unconsecrated food which was prepared. According to the purity of hallowed things, the latter five apply to hallowed things, but not to unconsecrated food prepared. According to the purity of hallowed things, he that carries anything possessing midras uncleanness may carry at the same time terima, but not hallowed things. Why not hallowed things? Because of a certain occurrence. For Rab Judah said that Samuel said when someone was conveying a jar of consecrated wine from one place to another Talmud, Mos Chagagai, when the thong of his sandal broke and he took it and placed it on the mouth of the jar and it fell into the hollow of the jar which was thus rendered unclean at that time they enjoined he that carries anything possessing midras uncleanness may carry at the same time terima, but not hallowed things. If so, it should be forbidden to carry terima too. This is according to our Hanani Biakibia who said they prohibited it only on the Jordan and in a ship and according to the circumstances of the occurrence. What is this? It is taught a man shall not take water of purification or ashes of purification and convey them over the Jordan in a ship, nor stand on one side of a river and throw them to the other side, nor float them over the water, nor ride upon all animal or his fellow unless his feet touch the ground. But one may unhesitatingly convey them over a bridge, be it across the Jordan or any other river. Our Hanani B. Akibia says they prohibited it only on the Jordan and in a ship, and according to the circumstances of the occurrence, what was the occurrence? Rab Judah said that Rab said when someone was conveying water of purification on the Jordan in a ship, and a piece of a corpse the size of an olive was found stuck in the bottom of the ship at that time, they enjoined a man shall not take water of purification and ashes of purification and convey them over the Jordan in a ship. A question was raised. It happened with all unclean sandal. What of a clean sandal? It happened with all. Open jar, what of a closed jar? How is it if a man transgressed and carried them thus? Our Ella said, if he transgressed and carried them thus, they are unclean. Our Zara said, if he transgressed and carried them thus, they are clean vessels that have been finished in purity, etc. Who finished them? Should one say that an associate finished them? Then why do they require immersion? If on the other hand, an Amharas finished them, can they be called finished in purity? Rabbi Bishila said that our Matana said that Samuel said, actually, one can say that an associate finished them, yet the vessel requires immersion, lest the spittle of an Amharas fell upon it. When could it have fallen upon it? Should one say, before he finished it, then it is not yet a vessel. If on the other hand, after he had finished it, then he would surely take good care of them. Actually, one can say that it fell upon it before he finished it, but perhaps at the time when he finished it, it was still moist. It states it. Requires only immersion, but not sunset. Our mission, therefore, is not according to our Eliezer, for we have learned if a reed pipe was cut for putting there in ashes of purification. Our Eliezer says it must be immersed forthwith. Our Joshua says it must first be rendered unclean and then immersed. Now we raise the point who could have cut it. Should one say that an associate cut it, then why is immersion required? If on the other hand, an Amhara has cut it, how can our Joshua in such a case say it must first be rendered unclean and then immersed? Behold, it is already unclean. Now Rabbi Bishila said that our Matana said that Samuel said, actually, you can say that an associate cut it, yet immersion is required, lest the spittle of an Amhara fell upon it again. When could it have fallen upon it? Should one say before he cut it, then it is not yet a vessel. If on the other hand, after he had cut it, he would surely take good care of it. Actually, you can say that it fell on the vessel before. He cut it, but perhaps at the time that he cut it, it was still moist. Granted, then according to our Joshua, a distinction is thus made as a demonstration against the Sadducees,
Unclean as a seat on which a gonorrhea is set as it is taught and he that sitteth on anything I might have thought that if the gonorrhea is inverted as he a measure and sat upon it or a tarkap measure and sat upon it it should become unclean therefore the text teaches us and he that sitteth on anything whereon he that hath the issue set shall become unclean meaning that which is appointed for sitting but that is excluded in regard to which we can say stand up that we may do. Our work a vessel unites all its contents for defilement in the case of hallowed things but not in the case of terima whence is this deduced our said scripture says one golden pan of ten shekels full of incense thus the verse made in the contents of the pen one arcahana raised an objection we have learned our akiba added with regard to the fine flour and the incense the frank incense and the coals that if one who had taken an immersion that day but had not yet awaited sunset touched day. Part thereof he renders the whole invalid now this is an enactment of the rabbis whence is this proven since it teaches in the first clause our simian be testified concerning the ashes of purification that if an unclean person touched the part thereof he rendered the whole unclean and then it teaches our akiba added reshlakish answered in the name of barkafer talmud mas chagigai it refers only to the remains of the meal offering for according to the torah that which requires the vessel the vessel unites that which does not require the vessel the vessel does not unite and the rabbis came and decreed that even though it does not require the vessel the vessel should unite it granted with regard to the fine flour but how are the incense and the frank incense to be explained our nom answered that rabbi abu said for instance if he heaped them upon a leather spread according to the torah that which has an inside can unite its contents that which has no inside Cannot unite them and the rabbis came and enacted that even that which has no inside should unite its contents now our Hanin's teaching when conflict with that of our high B Abba for our high B Abba said that our Yohanan said this mission was taught as a resent of our Akiva's testimony hallowed things become invalid by uncle Anas at the fourth remove it is taught our Jose said once is it deduced that hallowed things become invalid by uncleanness even at the fourth remove now it is to be deduced by conclusion ad majus if one who only needs to bring his atonement sacrifice in order to complete his purification is whilst being permitted to partake of Terima nevertheless disqualified for hallowed things how much more so should uncleanness at the third remove which renders Terima invalid produce in the case of hallowed things uncleanness at the fourth remove thus we learn uncleanness at the third remove in respect of hallowed things from the Torah and uncleanness at the Fourth remove by means of an afortiori argument whence do we deduce from the Torah uncleanness at the third remove in respect of hallowed things it is written and the flesh that touch it a thing unclean thing shall not be eaten we are surely dealing here with a case where it may have touched something suffering from uncleanness even at the second remove yet the divine law says it shall not be eaten uncleanness at the fourth remove by means of an afortiori argument as we have said above. In the case of Terima if one hand of a man became etc our Shezbi said they taught this only of a case where the hands are connected but not where they are not connected and they put an objection to him it is taught a dry unclean hand renders the other unclean so as to render hallowed things unclean but not Terima this is the view of Rabbi our Jose son of our Judah says so as to render invalid but not unclean now granted if you say that it refers also to a case where the hands are not Connected then the fact that the hand is dry is in that case remarkable but if you say that it refers only to a case where the hands are connected but not where they are not connected what is there remarkable about the hand being dry it is also taught Reshlakish said they taught this only of his own hand but not of the hand of his fellow Talmud, Mas Chagigabi but Aryohan and said be it his own hand or the hand of his fellow and with that hand he can defile the other hand so. As to render hallowed things invalid but not unclean whence is this deduced from the fact that the Mishnah teaches in the second clause that the one hand defiles the other for hallowed things but not for Terima why am I told this again behold it has already been taught in the first clause you must surely infer from this that it comes to include the hand of his fellow and Reshlakish to retract it for Arjona said that RMI said that Reshlakish said be it his own hand or the hand of his fellow with that hand he can defile the other so as to render hallowed things invalid but not unclean now whether the second hand renders hallowed things invalid but not unclean is disputed by Tanaim for we have learned whatsoever renders Terima invalid defiles the hands with uncleanness at the second remove and one hand renders the other uncleanness is the view of our Joshua but the sages say the hands possess uncleanness at the second remove and that which possesses uncleanness at the second remove cannot convey uncleanness at the second remove to anything else surely the meaning is it cannot convey uncleanness at the second remove but it can convey uncleanness at the third remove perhaps it does not convey uncleanness either at the second or the third remove rather is it disputed by the following Tanaim for it is taught a dry unclean hand renders the other unclean so as to render unclean in the case of hallowed things but not in the case of Terima this is the view of Rabbi Arjose, son of Arjuda, says that hand can defile another so as to render hallowed things invalid, but not unclean dry footstuffs may be eaten with unwashed hands, etc. It is taught our hand of a Antigono said, Is there a distinction in favor of dryness in regard to hallowed things? Does not then the honor in which hallowed things are held render them fit for uncleanness? It refers only to a case where his companion inserted the consecrated food into his mouth or he himself picked it up with a spindle or whirl and he wanted to eat unconsecrated horseradish or onion with it. Then in the case of hallowed things, the rabbis prohibited it. In the case of Terima, the rabbis did not prohibit it. A mourner prior to the burial of the deceased and one who needs to bring his atonement sacrifice in order to complete his purification, etc. What is the reason since up till now they were prohibited from partaking of hallowed things? The rabbis required them to take an immersion. Mission greater stringency applies to Terima than to hallowed things for in Judea they are trusted in regard to the purity of hallowed wine and oil throughout the year and only at the season of the wine presses and olive bats in regard to Terima if the season of the wine presses and olive bats was passed and one brought to him a jar of wine of Terima the latter may not accept it from him however the AMHIREZ may leave it for the coming season of the wine press but if he said to him I have set apart there in a quarter log as a hallowed thing he is trusted in regard to the purity of the whole in regard to jugs of wine and jugs of oil Talmud, Mas Chagigai that are mixed up they are trusted during the season of the wine presses and the olive bats and prior to the season of the wine presses 70 days Gamar in Judea but not in Galilee what is the reason Reshlakish said because a strip of land inhabited by Kutian separates them let it be brought then in a box. Chest or turret, this is according to Rabbi who said a tent in motion is not to be considered a tent for it is taught one who enters Gentile territory in a box chest or turret Rabbi declares to be unclean and our Jose be Judah to be clean but let it be brought in an earthenware vessel fitted with a closed-bound covering our Eliezer said they teach hallowed things are not protected by a closed-bound covering but it is taught the water of purification is not protected by a closed-bound covering. Surely this implies that hallowed things are protected no it implies that water which is not yet sanctified is protected by a closed-bound covering but Allah said the associates prepare their hallowed things in purity in Galilee they let them remain and when Elijah comes he would purify them and only at the season of the wine presses and olive bats in regard to Terima now we shall point to a contradiction he who finished gathering his olives let him leave one basket for Terima and give. It to a poor priest our nom and said there is no contradiction the one mission refers to early ripening olives and the other refers to later ripening olives said our Adabi Ahaba to him which are candidly ripening like those of your fathers our Joseph said they taught this of Galilee they put an objection to him Transjordania and Galilee are like Judea they are trusted there in regard to the wine during the wine season and in regard to the oil during the oil season but not in regard to the wine during the oil season and not in regard to the oil during the wine season the best explanation therefore is that which was given at first if the season of the wine presses and olive bats was passed and one brought to him a jar of wine of Terima the latter may not accept it from him however the AMHIREZ may leave it for the coming season of the wine press our she's hate was asked if the priest transgressed and accepted it may he leave it for the next season of the wine press he answered them yeah, have learned in Talmud, Mas Chagigabi if an associate and an Amhiraz inherited jointly from their father who was an Amhiraz the associate may say to the other take thou the wheat that is in one place and I shall take the wheat that is in the other place or take thou the wine that is in the one place and I
The sages did not maintain their enactment where Karath extinction was involved in the case of those who go to eat Terramah they maintained their enactment where death at the hands of heaven was involved the question was asked if one investigated a Beth Paris for his Passover sacrifice may he also eat his Terramah Rabbi Buna said if one investigated a Beth Paris for his Passover sacrifice he may not also eat his Terramah said an old scholar to him do not dispute with the love for we have learned according to his view but if he said to him I have set apart therein a quarter log as a hallowed thing he is trusted in regard to the purity of the whole thus since he is trusted in regard to hallowed things he is trusted also in regard to Terramah likewise in our case since he is credited to be clean in regard to the Passover sacrifice he is credited to be clean also in regard to Terramah in regard to jugs of wine and jugs of oil etc a tanna taught they are not trusted either. In regard to the casks or in regard to the terramah casks of what if they are casks of hallowed things then since they are trusted in regard to the hallowed things they are to be trusted also in regard to the casks if on the other hand they are casks of terramah this is obvious for if they are not trusted in regard to terramah are they to be trusted in regard to the casks it must refer therefore to empty casks of hallowed things at any time of the year or to full casks of terramah at the time. Of the bats we have learned in regard to jugs of wine and jugs of oil that are mixed up surely it means mixed up with terramah the school of our high said it means mixed up with hallowed things but does mixing up obtain in the case of hallowed things the school of our I said it is a case where he prepares his untithed produce in purity in order to take therefrom drink offerings prior to the season of the one presses seventy days of a said from this is to be deduced that it is. Obligatory on the heiress tenant to see to the provision of the jug seventy days before the pressing season mission from Modiim inwards the potters are trusted in regard to earthenware vessels from Modiim outwards they are not trusted for instance if the potter who sells the pots entered inwards of Modiim then the same potter in regard to the same pots and in regard to the same buyers is trusted but if he went out from Modiim outwards he is not trusted Gemara Etan taught Modiim. Itself is sometimes considered as inwards sometimes as outwards for instance if the potter is going out and the associate is coming in it is considered as inwards if both are coming in Talmud, Mos Chagigai or both are going out it is considered as outwards Abbe said we have also learned accordingly if the potter who sold the pots entered inwards of Modiim thus it is only because it is inwards of Modiim that he is trusted but in Modiim itself he is not trusted consider now that Latter part of the Mishnah if he went out he is not trusted thus in Modiim itself he is to be trusted it is clearly then to be deduced from this that in the one case the potter is going out and the associate is coming in in the other case both are going out or both are coming in proven attended taught they are trusted only in regard to small earthenware vessels for hallowed things Resh Lakish said only if they can be taken in one hand but Aryohanan said even if they cannot be taken in one hand Resh Lakish said they taught this only of empty vessels but not of fun ones but Aryohanan said even of fun ones and even if his head covering is in it Rabba said but Aryohanan admits that the liquid itself is unclean and do not wonder at the anomaly for in the case of a jar full of liquid the jar is unclean for seven days but the liquid is clean Mishnah if tax collectors entered a house and similarly if thieves restored stolen vessels they are believed if they say we have not touched. Anything and in Jerusalem they are trusted in regard to hallowed things and during a festival also in regard to Terra Magamara now we shall point to a contradiction if tax collectors entered a house the whole house is rendered unclean there is no contradiction in the one case a Gentile was with them in the other case there was no Gentile with them for we have learned if a Gentile is with them they are believed if they say we have not entered at all but they are not believed if they say we entered but we did not touch anything what difference does it make if a Gentile be with them or Yohanan and our Eliezer explained and one says they are afraid of the Gentile the other says they are afraid of the government what is the practical difference between them there is a practical difference between them when the Gentile is not of high standing and similarly if thieves restored stolen vessels now we shall point to a contradiction if thieves entered a house it is not rendered unclean. Except for the place where the feet of the thieves have trodden are finna said in the name of Rab the Mishnah speaks of a case when they have repented it is moreover to be deduced for the Mishnah teaches if the thieves restore the vessels proven and in Jerusalem they are trusted in regard to hallowed things a tanna taught they are trusted in regard to large earthenware vessels for hallowed things why in this because no furnaces were erected in Jerusalem and during a festival also in regard to Terramah whence is this deduced our Joshua B. Levi said scripture says so all the men of Israel were gathered against the city associated as one man thus the verse made them an associate's mission if an associate opened his jar of wine or broke into his dough to sell them on account of the festival our Judah says he may finish selling them after the festival but the sages say he may not finish Amar Rmi and our Isaac Napaha sat in the anteroom of our Isaac Napaha one began and Said may he leave it for another festival said the other to him the hands of untouch it and you say leave it for another festival said the former did not till now the bands of untouch it the other replied to him what a comparison it is all right up to now because the divine law purified the uncleanness of the Amhara as during the festival but now it is unclean retrospectively shall we say that Tanaim differ thereon for one berry the taught he may leave it for another festival and another berry the taught he may not leave it for another festival sure why Tanaim differ thereon no the one berry the which teaches that he may leave it is according to our Judah the other which teaches that he may not leave it is according to the rabbis but can you possibly think so behold our Judah said he may finish selling them rather the berry the which teaches that he may not leave it is according to our Judah and the one that teaches that he may leave it is according to the rabbis and he May not leave it means that there is no need for him to leave it. Mission as soon as the festival was over, they cleared up for the purification of the temple court. If the festival terminated on Friday, they did not clear up on account of the honor due to the Sabbath. Our Judah said neither on Thursday for the priests were not yet free. Gemara Etan taught for the priests were not yet free from the prior duty of removing the ashes. Mission how did they clear up for the purification of it? Temple court they immersed the vessels which were in the temple and they used to say to them, Take ye Talmud, Mos Chagigabi that ye touch not the table and thus render it unclean. All the vessels that were in the temple had second and third set so that if the first were rendered unclean, they might bring a second set in its place. All the vessels that were in the temple required immersion except the altar of gold and the altar of bronze for they were counted as the ground. This is a view. Of our Eliezer, but the sages say because they were overlaid with metal. Gemara Etan taught take heed lest ye touch the table or the candlestick. Why does not our Tana mention the candlestick in connection with the table? There is written the word tamed perpetual in connection with the candlestick. There is not written the word tamed and the other Tana since it is written and the candlestick over against the table. It is as though the word tamed were written in connection therewith. And the other Tana that verse comes merely to fix its place, but I can on the contrary deduce it from the fact that the table is a wooden utensil made for resting things on it, and any wooden utensil made for resting things on it is not subject to uncleanness. What is the reason we require it to be like a sack? Just as a sack is movable, both fun and empty. So everything that is movable, both full and empty, is susceptible to uncleanness. This too is movable, both fun and empty is resh. Lakish said for Resh Lakish said what is the meaning of the verse upon the clean table the inference is that it is susceptible to uncleanness but why it is a wooden utensil made for resting things on it and cannot therefore contract uncleanness it teaches therefore that they used to lift it and show thereon to the festival pilgrims the showbread and to say to them behold the love in which you are held by the omnipresent it is taken away as fresh as it is set down for our Joshua B. Levi. Said a great miracle was performed in regard to the showbread as fresh as it was when set down so was it taken away for it is said to put hot bread at the day when it was taken away but I can deduce this from the fact that it is overlaid for behold we have learned if a table or a side table was damaged or was overlaid with marble but room was left for setting cups there and it remains susceptible to uncleanness our Judah said there must be room also for setting portions of food thereon and should you say acacia wood is valuable and is not nullified by the plating this would be quite right according to Resh Lakish who said they taught this only of utensils of common wood which come from overseas but utensils of polished wood are not nullified but what can one say according to our Yohanan who said even vessels of polished wood
Shalt make unto me the altar of gold, for it is written the candlestick and the altars, thus the altars are likened one to another, but the sages say because they were overlaid with metal, on the contrary, since they were overlaid, they were susceptible to uncleanness, red, but the sages declared them unclean because they were overlaid, or alternatively, I can explain the rabbi say to our Eliezer, what have you in mind the fact that they were overlaid, but their plating was quite nullified in regard. To them, our Rabbi said that our Eliezer said the fire of Gehenim has no power over the scholars. It is an ad major's conclusion to be drawn from the salamander. If now, in the case of the salamander, which is only an offspring of fire, he who anoints himself with its blood is not affected by fire. How much more so the scholars whose whole body is fire? For it is written, is not my word like as fire saith the Lord. Rush said the fire of Gehenim has no power over the transgressors of Israel. It is an ad major's conclusion to be drawn from the altar of gold. If the altar of gold on which there is only a denar thickness of gold is not affected through so many years by the fire, how much less so the transgressors of Israel who are full of good deeds as a pomegranate is of seeds? For it is written, thy temples are like a pomegranate split open. Read not thy temples rock effect, but thy worthless ones reconnaim Shabak.